you who just joined us, I'm going to go ahead and say welcome to all of you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So in my case, I used to have these terrible migraines. Give me a one in chat if any of you here have ever had any body pain. And give me a two in chat if you've ever had any emotional pain. Now, in many cases, if you have emotional pain, it can result in body pain. And I used to have these terrible debilitating migraines. I would begin here and they would rivet down my neck and then down my shoulders. And they would kind of cripple me, you know, to be able to perform in any meaningful way. And I had a PhD in cancer research from Oxford University. So I was very, very anti, I was very against anything to do with alternate healing. I was a non-believer, by the way. And this one day I was in my sister's house. By the way, my accent does change a little bit from British to Indian to Australian to South African. The reason is I'm born in Singapore. And then I have lived in Hong Kong. I've lived in India, in the North, in Delhi. I've lived in Hyderabad. I've lived in Mumbai. Then I've lived in the United Kingdom as well. And I've lived in the United States. I am what you call self-made. I started from zero. And then I've built five businesses today. So my accent does change. And sometimes it can sound Australian because I think Australian is the accent that combines all the different dialects. Okay. So I was in my sister's house and my sister was teaching her very first EFT seminar. And there I was sniggering away going, oh gosh, she's teaching this terrible thing where you touch yourself like this and you say these statements out loud because I was a non-believer. I'm not proud of myself, but I made fun of my sister. And on this particular day, I had a really bad headache and my mother was with me. And Ma, being my biggest teacher of unconditional love, she said to me, can I try this tapping thing out with you? And my immediate reaction was, no, you can't. Because I was one of those children that if the mother suggested anything, I said, no, who knows what I'm talking about Right for me, N-O in chat, if you've ever been a rejection person, you're like, no, I am not going to take your advice. And write for me in chat, yes, if you have been a very goody, goody girl, goody, goody boy, and whatever your parents said, you're like, yes, 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 yes. So I was actually good. We got some yeses and some noes. I love that. Okay. I think we got more yeses here than noes. I'm used to a lot more rebels. Anyway, I was da uh, Vani, good to know. Huh? So I was definitely a, 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 a no child. Now, I think something happens to the mother. If there are any mothers or fathers in this group, can you give me either an M or F in chat? M for mother, F for father. You can decide if you're the mother or the father, gender doesn't matter, okay? Now, how many of you here are not a mother or father, but you're a child? Give me a C. So even if you're a child, lovely, beautiful. Now, this is the thing. I believe something happens. The minute the child is born, I believe the selling gene of the mother and father switches off. And what happens is a child doesn't want to drink milk. And the mother goes, oh, I mean, I don't recommend this kind of selling tactic. But anyway, the mother goes, oh, I'll give you 10 rupees. You drink that milk. This is known as bribery and corruption, OK? Now, some mothers like and fathers like to influence differently, like, oh, you know, beta, the milk, it's got calcium in it, good healthy bones, you'll be able to be, you know, if they want to be a sports person, come on, you know, drink it. And then try and cajole them. If you're not a mother yet, you've been a child. Now nah? it doesn't matter. You've been a child. So you've been on the receiving end of it. Yeah. And so I believe my mother also had this selling ability. And she knew I loved Indian head massages. And she said to me, Deepa, which is my pet name, she said, Deepa, let me try this EFT thing on you. Hmm? Let me check for a second. Huh? Are you all here emotional freedom technique seminar or electronic fund transfer seminar? They have the same thing, EFT. Because last time when I did this, we had about 100 people show up who came for electronic fund transfer, okay? So just write EFT in chat if you're here for 
emotional freedom techniques. Thanks, Meghna, for letting me know. So then, <laughs> my, my mother, she bribed me basically. And she said, Deepa, let me try this EFT tapping technique out on you. Hmm. And if it works, I'll give you an Indian head massage. I thought, Are wa, this is very good. This is a good deal. And then she said something that was the clincher for me. She goes, Deepa, if it doesn't work, I'll still give you an Indian head massage. Like, Mama, you need to be my stockbroker. I like this strategy that, you know, if my stocks go up, I'll get a benefit. If my stocks go down, I'll also get a benefit. I was like, wow, this is amazing. So then Ma said to me, she goes, Deepa, tell me about the headache. What number is it at? I thought she'd gone like cuckoo at this point, like one marble shot of a full set. Who has a number of a headache, man? You have a headache and that is about it, all you have. But somehow 10 popped out of my mouth before I had chance to even think about it. She goes, oh, 10 headache. I said, yeah, ma, 10 headache. And she goes, what color is it? I'm like, oh, she really needs to be put in a white jacket now and sent to a mental asylum. And then red popped out of my mouth. And she goes, where is it? I said, it's here and it's down my neck and down my shoulders. And it's like a, a current, like a current going through throbbing and pulsating. So Ma said, just do whatever I tell you now. You know, there comes a moment when you don't say no, okay? This was that moment. In this moment, it was like, follow. And do it religiously, okay? So she goes, tap here. So everybody do it with me, tap here. Whether you have a headache or not, do this. Huh? It will still be good for you. And she said, tap here. And then she said, say out loud with me, even though, so I went, even though. And even. she went, not right now, sweetheart. I'll come back again. And she went, even though. Even though. <laughs> She said, just wait, wait, wait. I don't, don't need it repeated right now. Just wait, I'll tell the story, okay? And so she said to me, even though I have this headache and it's a 10 on 10 headache, I love and accept myself. And then I repeated that after my mother, okay? Swati, come and join me now and just stay where you are though. So just repeat it out to me verbally. So even though- Even though- I have this headache. I have this headache. It's a 10 on 10. It's a 10 on 10. And it's a red headache. And it's a red headache. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. And Ma got me to tap here. So all of you go ahead and do that with me. Red headache. Red headache. This red headache. Hi, this red headache. 10 on 10. Hi, darling. Yes. This, ten red ten. <laughs> this red headache. 10 on 10 red headache. 10 on 10 red headache. This red headache. This red headache. 10 on 10. Red headache. Red headache. 10 on 10. 10 on 10. Red headache. Red headache. This red headache. This red headache. 10 on 10. 10 on 10. This 10 on 10 red headache. This 10 on 10 red headache. Even though I have this red headache. Even though I have this red headache. It's 10 on 10. It's 10 on 10. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. My mother did only one round. My headache went down to a seven from a 10. And I said to myself, shall I let her know or not? Because my pride was being affected right now because I dismissed this technique. And somehow I said, you know, Ma, it's a seven. I told her the truth. And then she asked me a question and she said, how does a headache really make you feel? And I swallowed and I gulped a piece of air. And I said to her, helpless. I didn't have time to filter. I didn't have time to filter my response. And then we started the next round, even though <clears throat> Even though I feel helpless, I feel helpless. I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely love and accept myself, love and accept myself. 
even though I feel really helpless, even though I feel really helpless, I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway, love and accept myself anyway. So helpless, so helpless, really helpless, purely helpless, 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 so helpless, so helpless really helpless really helpless and then i took a breath in through my nose and out through my mouth the headache came down to a zero but my pride got in the way and i said ma it's a three I knew on that day, in fact, I was reading some of your WhatsApp messages where some of you have written that you've experienced EFT before, or you've heard about the miraculous nature of it, and you've come to explore it further. Well, I hadn't heard about it. I didn't believe in miracles. But I knew on that day for the first time in my life, in three years of having vomiting headaches every single day on waking, going to work and coming back to work. Why are you putting your fourth time that I didn't have migraines anymore. And I secretly look things up on the internet. I secretly look I secretly look things up on the internet where I looked up on the internet all the different ways I could learn EFT. And I found a teacher in the north of England. Her name was Gwyneth. And then I went to learn EFT with her. And I noticed as I learned EFT with her, slowly, slowly, my migraines went down from every day to every other day, to once a week, to every two weeks, to once a month, to every six months, to every now and again. I am an example of what is known as spontaneous healing and incremental healing, where in one shot I experience pain relief. And then incrementally over a space of time, I experience my migraines reducing down to where do I get migraines these days? No. Do I get a headache? Yes, from time to time, maybe just like any normal human being. I get a headache from time to time. So go ahead and take a breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm gonna go and screen, <clears throat> go ahead and screen share right now. So that can you see my screen? <clears throat> Lovely, so you're here to learn about EFT, which is a fast, to give fast therapeutic results, to feel happy, relaxed and at peace. Now, sometimes people come on this seminar because either they're experiencing some kind of pain or tension. If you fall into that category of pain or tension and the reason you were drawn here today, give me a one in chat. Sometimes people come here because they find they're having cravings. They're eating chocolates or they're eating chips or they're having pao bhaji or samosa. And so they're emotionally eating. Give me a two in chat. If that describes you, is that you notice yourself either drinking or emotionally eating or indulging in some kind of addictive behavior. Or is it three? And some of you have already written down three with fears. Is it because there's some kind of fear that you would like to be able to work through. Or perhaps you're here because you've got a health challenge, maybe a digestive issue like irritable bowel or acidity or heartburn. Or perhaps you have a heart challenge like blood pressure. Or you're here because you've just recovered from the coronavirus. Or perhaps you're here because you're going through some kind of grief or sadness. Or perhaps you've experienced some past trauma. Examples of past trauma could be an accident. Examples of past trauma could be a fight with a family member or friend, could be 
a heartbreak, a breakup, a loss. Did you know that when you lose someone you love or when someone you love hurts you emotionally, it feels like as if you are experiencing a full blown car crash, by the way. Thank you so much for putting that, Mira. I really appreciate what you've written. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you so much. Thank you, Neelam. Neelam, remind me to share the story about the high blood pressure and the eye problem as well. I have both stories with EFT. Remind me to share them with you. So who is it for? It's people who want to learn about an emotional or therapy technique. It's people who want to heal from within and free limits. And if this describes you, put a one for number one, a two for number two, a three for number three, a four for number four, and a five for number five. So is it maybe that you already are in the helping therapy or coaching profession and you wanna learn, uh, you wanna add another tool to your toolbox? Perhaps you want to help yourself and others, you know, give me a four in chat if that describes you. Or perhaps you're seeking a new profession like I was, you know, when I'd reached the end of my career in my corporate career. Or perhaps you're here, number six, you're just curious. Number seven, you want to help your child and family. So I'm not sure if uh, Sonal Sinha has joined us here today, but you know she's a parent and she's done EFT with us and she uses it with her, her children as well. Uh, or perhaps it's because you want to, number eight, identify and release emotional patterns. Number nine, boost your career. So I do a lot of work with leadership teams and working professionals to remove the emotional interference and so that they can really focus on their work and to increase their money and abundance. Or is it number 10, you're just here for revision and deeper understanding. I noticed some of you already posted some quite deep EFT technical questions at the start about how many times, which hand. So I'll cover those questions as we finish the seminar. In our time together, what are you going to learn? You're gonna learn how do our emotions and stress contribute to illness? You're gonna learn how can you reverse the negative effects of stress and health? You're gonna learn about what is emotional freedom technique and how does it provide results so quickly? And I've been reading up more about this recently because I've been <clears throat> facilitating a program called Body Vitality for people who want to lose weight and increase their body confidence. So I'll give you a sneak peek <clears throat> as to some of the clinical data on weight loss with EFT, because many times people say to me, what about weight loss? And I myself have been astounded by the science and the scientific data that's coming out over the last three years in this area. And I think it's only a matter of time before it becomes the main form of treatment because EFT has been shown to change the chemical imbalance in the brain that is present for people with an addiction, by the way. We have nothing else available like that in the world today that can do that, by the way. There's no drug or medicine that can do that. And I am talking about the technology of emotional health and mind and thoughts. That's the technology I'm referring to right now. I myself have used the technology of emotional health and mind power to heal myself from cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer in when I was 29 years old and living in Florida. I didn't use chemotherapy. I didn't use surgery. I didn't use any form of medication. I purely used a technique that helped me to get to the root cause of the reason cancer was in place. You can't hear me, so that right now there's no audio? There is audio, okay. So Rasika, you might need to just turn your volume up, okay? Now, uh, I'll also teach, I'll also share with you, how can you help others heal and make it a profession? Give me a four in chat if that describes you. You are already a healer, a therapist, a psychologist. You're already a counselor and you're here because you're curious to know about EFT and you're curious to know you know what, I want to learn it possibly and make it into a profession and make a difference to the lives of others. Okay, so in our time together, you are going to learn everything you need to know to relieve stress in yourself before it becomes a bigger problem, to feel peace, calm and relaxed, being in control of your own emotions. What are some of the house rules for today? 
this is not a coaching and therapy. This is, this is not a therapy session. I'm, I'm not going to be giving you personal therapy. I'm going to teach the techniques so you can give yourself the therapy so that you can use the technique for yourself. Thank you so much, Rupali, for sharing that. I really appreciate that. This is not a do nothing, feel calm and at peace. This is not a magic pill and I'm going to feel okay. So if anyone thinks you've come here, like, you know, I'll just have this, take this one pill, everything will be healed. I mean, I was on paracetamol and codeine for three years. Do you know codeine is the most addictive, one of the most addictive substances you can take? Because of my headaches, I'd pop paracetamol and codeine like, because codeine is an addictive drug and it makes you feel slightly, Ooh, life is good. I'm good. It's okay. And basically I was damaging my liver and my kidneys as well. And and sometimes that's what people want. They want, yeah, absolutely, uh, Dr. Raj, it is a narcotic. I so agree with you. In India, it's available over the counter. You don't even need a prescription to get it, um, which is frightening to me. Um, you must be able to learn and put the work in to be able to get the results that I'm talking about. Like, as in, that's what I did. I learned the technique. I used it on myself. And then that's how I healed, okay? Now... Let me go through the signs. 85% of illness is stress related. And this is according to the American Medical Association. That when they investigate people who had an illness from maybe a heart ailment or a lung ailment, or perhaps a cold or a cough or a fever, or perhaps they had body pain, they had perhaps not being able to walk because their back had seized up is they related it back to emotional stress. This is a second scientific fact. 90% of doctor visits are stress related. I mean, if any of you want these references, we'll make them available to you. Just give me an REF in chat and we will make sure that we get these references to you as well. And um, we'll put them on the WhatsApp groups that you're a member of over the coming weeks as well, so that you can have access to these references as well. The third fact is stress is one of the leading causes of addiction, weight gain, and obesity. You see, people are trying to solve the divorce problem, not by handling the stress People are trying to solve the divorce problem by divorcing and splitting. And then the pattern emerges again because the stress hasn't been handled. People are trying to resolve the weight issue by diet and exercise and not by stress reduction. Reduction in stress with EFT has been clinically proven to lower salivary cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone that measures the level of stress in our body. When patients were put in these MRI scanners, so they were put in MRI scanners and their brain waves were scanned and they went to a particular part of the brain known as an amygdala, which is an almond shaped part of the brain, which is also the pleasure and the pain center when the amygdala experiences pain, it wants to indulge in addictive habits. When the amygdala experiences emotional pleasure, it does not want to engage in addictive habits. And what they found is, is when people received EFT tapping, even in the face of stress, the amygdala was not activated for pain but instead was activated for pleasure. Now, this is very significant information. I don't know if any of you medical professionals here, psychiatrists, psychologists, healers, therapists work in addictions. I mean, this is very, very significant for addiction because what this is saying is by using an emotional and a thought technology, you can actually help someone that's struggling to lose weight. Now, the next fact, and this is based on a clinical study that was conducted in California in an institute known as Kaiser Permanente. And it's one of the largest studies conducted on emotional upsets. And what they found in this particular study 
is people who had had emotional upsets early on in life. It led to illness later on in life. Now, this is what was incredible, is if they received some form of therapy that helped them to overcome that past pain, they could reverse the negative effects of illness. I mean, this is incredible. Are you, are you taking this in? Give me a 100 in chat. If you're like, oh, oh my gosh, this is incredible. You mean I don't need to be on drugs and for the rest of my life that I could actually start to resolve some of my physical and emotional challenges by addressing the root cause of what is really going on. The next fact, which I wish I was aware of as a child, and I wish there was some incredible principal or teacher that knew this and taught us in assembly how to release our emotions. I was not taught to do that. I was taught good girls don't cry. I was taught strong boys don't cry. And that's the biggest nonsense I've ever heard in my whole life. I was taught when you've lost a parent, don't cry. Do you know not being able to grieve for the loss of a lo loved one results in reproductive dysfunction, results in immune system disorder. It's the reason why I did the boosted program for 21 days, just to support people to be able to let go of their emotional challenges and start to heal. Suppressed emotions, you know, it's like you, you put it all in a bottle and you just suppress it and suppress it and suppress it and suppress it. And say if it's in a pressure cooker, and it's burning away and it's churning away and churning one day just goes like it happened to me, cancer diagnosis. Suppressed emotions are directly linked to illnesses like cancer, illnesses like arthritis, cardiovascular problems, diabetes, by the way. But what we don't know is how to actually discover which emotions have we suppressed. And what we don't know is how to uncover what they are and clear them. And that's what I'm gonna share with you. Suppressed emotions I share with you can increase the risk of cancer by 70% and heart disease by 47%. Unexpressed <laughs> anger as well is linked to cancer. And in fact, on this note, let me do a little bit of teaching for all of us right now. And many of you probably have come across this teaching before. It's one of my favorite things to teach. If you came on boosted, you definitely learned this from me. And it's very simple. I want you to do this with your fingers. And as you do this with your fingers, I just want you to find your collarbone. So for me, my collarbone is here and just underneath the collarbone here. And I want you just to tap here underneath the collarbone. This exercise that we're doing right now, we're gonna be releasing negativity, which might include anger. And as this is happening, it means that if there is any suppression there, we can start to let it be free. So find it here, breathe in and out, and then breathe in again. You're going to make an R sound. Ah! This time you're going to do step three which is stand the feet. You're going to have like a tantrum like this and do this with your feet. Three, two, one. Ah. Who's feeling better? Give me a 100 in chat. If you're feeling better, just from this short exercise. If you've got a question for me, you want to send it to Sudha in private. Some of you are sending it to me in my private chat and I will not, I cannot have a look at the private chat. So I'm just letting you know, and I'm happy to answer them at the end as well. Okay. Lovely. Let me continue. Okay. So the next scientific fact is about unforgiveness. If you hold on to unforgiveness, and what's the reason people hold on to unforgiveness? Because they haven't emptied out yet. You see, you can only truly forgive when you actively communicate the pain of what you are feeling. And holding on to unforgiveness can lead to diabetes, physical pain in the body, and heart attack as well. So what can you do? You can figure out a way that works to release stress. 
You can use a clinically proven method to free suppressed emotions. You can learn a method to let go of the past of death and trauma. And so that brings me to emotional freedom techniques, because this is my method of choice that I teach and I've taught to 20,000 people worldwide to be able to release stress. It's clinically proven and it can be learned and it can be applied on the self or it can be received from a practitioner. And EFT has been clinically proven to overcome stress, to eliminate pain, to heal the past trauma, to defeat phobias, to heal accidents, to stop food cravings, to stop smoking cravings, to break through limits and manifest money and wealth and abundance and career and profession, to also be able to work with children and teenagers. Like we have practitioners that specialize, for example, with special needs autistic children or specialize working with parents. So the main clinical data that's available for EFT is on something known as PTSD. If you know what PTSD is, give me a one in chat. PTSD basically is post-traumatic stress disorder. And what does that mean? It's stress as a result of a past trauma. The bulk of the studies have been done on veterans that have come back from the war. Because being in the war, they have experienced trauma where either they lost, a, you know, they were right there and their, their friend was gunned down or perhaps they had to do something to somebody else in the spirit of supporting their country. And so this creates, I remember once working with a, um, a veteran from Vietnam and, um, you know, he said to me, his name was Ollie. And he said to me, uh, a gun was put to my head and I was forced to murder women and children. And I was told by my superior that if I didn't do it, a gun would be pointed to the head of my family. And I did it and I didn't have an option to kill myself because that was the first option I wanted. And my superior said, if you kill yourself, we will still kill your family members. And he came to me distraught, startled headaches, mood swings, not being able to sleep, not being able to function, not being able to hold a conversation down, living in fear, but yet brusque and angry on the outside. He looked powerful. He looked like, you know, don't fuck with me type look, but inside a pussycat, scared, helpless, lost, overthinking. And we did six EFT sessions together, step by step, nothing fancy. And over time, he started to connect with himself, the heart of him. He started to connect with who he was. He started to connect with what he wanted in life. And over the course of the year, he started to sleep better. He could re-engage with his wife because his wife had told him, you're out. I don't want to be with this person that is so unruly. It is so difficult to live with because the trauma was coming out as a behavior. And then there came a day when he said to me, I'm done. Thank you so much. And he said, the biggest gift I can give you is I don't need to see you again. And it was the happiest day ever. And I blessed him and he went on my way. I've shared my story with you, right? I can guarantee you our practitioners who have been through our practitioner training, they make an equal difference in the lives of other people. Let me go on and share more. Thank you, Chitra. And so in this study, now in this study, the people who were trained in EFT, by the way, were not psychologists and therapists and counselors. They were just normal people that had never done any therapy or coaching in their lives. And they learned EFT, they were trained, they were certified, and they gave six sessions to people coming back from war. And they used techniques that clear the past memory. And what they found was after six sessions, 90% were free from the PTSD criteria. EFT has also been shown 
to over a period of four weeks to give an average four weeks of weight loss. But this is what's staggering to me is after the four weeks, when those same patients in the clinical study are followed up, the weight loss continues over a period of 1.5 years. In the study I'm referring to, it was compared to cognitive behavioral therapy. And they found across the four weeks, the weight came down with cognitive behavioral therapy too. But the marked difference was with cognitive behavioral therapy, the weight did not continue to decrease. Whereas with EFT, because it was addressing the root cause interventionally, it continued to decrease over a period of time. These are some of the other areas in EFT, reduction test taking anxiety. I mean, how many of you are teachers here? Give me a T or you're a student, give me an S. And you'd love a technique that would help you to reduce your test taking anxiety. I remember working once with an 18 year old girl from Southeast Asia and she wanted to get into university and she tried three times and she, she, she couldn't get in. And I met her and we did sessions. Initially we did some face to face and then we did the rest of them online and she wanted to get to university in the United States. And what we uncovered is when she was very little, she failed a test and she was humiliated. She was humiliated by her teacher and she was humiliated by her parents. She took her report card home and her father circled with a big red pen, the bad mark that she got, but he never took a green pen and ticked and put stars and hearts and well done across all the other 90 and 80% that this person had got. And when we cleared that fear, that anxiety that had been drilled into her, that she was just useless and a complete and abject failure, she was able to calm down when she had to take her exams and do the entrance for the universities in the United States. And six months later in September, she sent me a text saying, I've just got in to Yale University, by the way a dream which she would never have imagined that she'd be able to do. So reduction in test-taking anxiety, reduction in depression, 73% reduction in college students, by the way, and depression, I mean, it, it, in college students in India, I mean, I'm not proud of this, it's big. And then it leads to suicide as well, you know, and people want, I mean, the school my sister went to was in Gujarat, in a, in a state called Gujarat. She went to University of Baroda. Not a week would go by when a young girl would not burn herself in the toilets because of the pressure to do well in exams. I mean, it was just frightening or because they became pregnant. And if the family found out they would be ostracized basically because their parents were forcing them to take a medical degree and they didn't want to take a medical degree. They wanted to do engineering or something else. And they felt there was no other option than to take kerosene, pour it over themselves and end their life. And before that, prior to that, they were facing depression. I'm so grateful there are these amazing charities right now that do support people and they can have, you know, when my sister was in university, this kind of support infrastructure was not there, but it's there right now, which is great. Now it improves athletic performance because many, many people who come to EFT are celebrities like Whoopi Goldberg came to EFT to overcome a fear of flying, for example. So athletic performance, sports performance, improvement of pain. This was a study in, on 216 healthcare workers. Improvement of fibromyalgia, which is basically muscle pain, reduction in small animal phobias. Now, this was a very staggering study. Where in this study, there was a nutritionist that took a little prick of blood. And she took the prick of blood and she looked at it under a live microscope. And she looked at how the blood cells were moving live under the microscope. And then what she did is half the group received two minutes of non-specific EFT. And half the group received nothing. What she found in the group that received half min uh, two minutes of EFT is the blood was freely flowing like this, by the way, and not clumped together. Just two minutes of non-specific EFT. In fact, let's do, let's do some EFT together and then I'll teach you the steps as well, okay? Let's do this together, okay? So the first thing I want all of you to do is we're gonna do it on breathing right now. We're gonna do it on breathing. So the first thing I want you to do right now is take a breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I want you to give a measure for yourself 
I want you to give a measure for yourself. How constricted is your breathing? Where 10 is really constricted and zero is not constricted at all. So how constricted, tight, tense, anything like that. Yeah, lovely. So zero, Nita, that's great. Two, six, five, eight, seven, two, eight, five. Yeah, that's great. Seven, five, five. Yeah, lovely. Nine, lovely. That's great. One, five, six, five. Yeah, that's great. Okay, lovely. Good. So let's do an experiment together. So begin by tapping here. And can you write for me in chat some words that describe your breathing? So even though. Even though. My breathing is a little tight. My breathing is a little tight. And it feels heavy. And it feels heavy. And it feels broken. And it feels broken. And it feels suffocating. And it feels suffocating. And it feels anxious. And it feels anxious. And it feels blocked. And it feels blocked. And it feels heavy. And it feels heavy. And deathly. And deathly. Gasping. Gasping. And just not deep enough. And just not deep enough. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely. Love and accept myself anyway. Love and accept myself anyways. Even though. Even it, though. My breathing feels so heavy. My breathing feels so heavy. Feels so blocked. Feels so blocked. And I feel shut out. And I feel shut out. I'm gasping for air. I'm gasping for air. Feels so tight. Feels so, so tight. tight. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Feels really tight. Feels really tight. Feels so tight. Feels so tight. So broken. So broken. So tired. So tired. So broken. So broken. You know, all my years of doing this, I've never read such strong words for breathing, by the way. That's strange. I don't know if it's because some of you are also affected by what's happening with the pandemic. But this is big. I mean, some of the words you've put, like dying, not deep enough, <laughs> deathly, blocked, choked, suffocating. I mean, these, these are really big words. Keep tapping with me and keep connecting with the emotion. Whether you relate to the words or not, just keep tapping with me because what I'm sensing is there's this strong veil around us. There's this, you know, this black veil that's covering us right now. And it's time to lift it, by the way. So let's do this again. Swati, come, let's do it again. Even though, even though it feels so heavy, it feels so heavy, heavy, and it feels really tight. It feels really tight. I love and accept myself anyway. I love and accept myself anyway. So heavy. So heavy. Really heavy. Really heavy. 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 So heavy. So heavy. Really heavy. Even though it feels so heavy. Even though it feels so heavy. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely. 
Love and accept all of me. Love and accept all of me. Breathing through the nose and out through the mouth. So I can feel my breathing feels better. And yet there's still a little bit of tightness here in my throat. Give me a W in chat if it got worse. Give me an S in chat if it stayed the same. And give me a B in chat if it got better. Wow, that's incredible how many of you are writing that it got better. Now, if it got worse, there's a reason, by the way. And the reason is we need your exact words. I'm using general words of what people have posted in the group. Okay, yeah, better but drain. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, okay, thank you so much for sharing. Can you imagine that if we are just doing this for generic taboo? and not specific and not specifically diving into the root cause, can you imagine the benefit it will have once you start to dive into the root cause? Let's do another round here. Even though, even though I can't always breathe freely. I can't always breathe freely. That was then. That was then. This is now. This is now. I'm open to the possibility I'm open to the possibility of breathing freely anyway. Of breathing freely anyway. So top of the head. Suppose somehow. Suppose somehow. I could breathe freely now. I could breathe freely now. What if I could breathe freely? What if I could breathe freely? Suppose somehow. Suppose somehow I could free all my breathing. I could free all my breathing. And I could relax now. And I could relax now. What if? What if? In this moment. In this moment. I could get my breathing to just clear. I could get my breathing to just clear. And I could feel myself breathing freely. And I could see myself breathing freely. And out. And out. Breathing freely. Breathing freely. Breathing freely. Breathing freely. Breathing freely. Breathing freely. Free breath. Free breath. Free flowing breath. Free flowing breath. Lovely. Thank you so much, Lovely. Lovely. Give me a B in chat if you feel better overall as well right now from just this short demonstration on constricted breathing. Can you, if you haven't got water, can you go get some water? And if you've got water with you, can you please drink some water right now? Make sure you're drinking some water. Okay, yeah, lovely, lovely. Great to see you, Rohini Master. Happy you made it here. Thank you, Padma. Thank you, Rupali. Thanks, Tanvi. Thanks, Nikita. Lovely, fabulous. Mm. Right. Mahesh, you know, the direct message to me will not be saved. Can you, can you post it on the WhatsApp group or just reach out to Nimisha? Nimisha, can you do one thing right now on the WhatsApp groups? Just send a message on all the WhatsApp groups saying, hi, this is Nimisha, and just put your number there as a contact. So those who are private messaging me right now, because I'll lose all the chat when we close it at the end that have come to me privately. So um, she can respond to you over the coming days as well. Um, Namisha, can you help Jitu, like how he joins the WhatsApp group, please? Okay, so let me go back. Now, this is the other part of the clinical data. So the clinical data also looked at specific physiological markers where cortisol came down, immune system markers went up, pain came down, anxiety came down, depression came down, PTSD came down, resting heart rate came down, happiness went up, blood pressure came down and food cravings came down as well. So this is the biochemical data as well as physical data to prove that EFT works. Now there are celebrities who have also used EFT. Lily Allen has used it for her weight loss. Madonna is a fan of EFT. Michael Ball is a stage actor. He uses it before he goes on stage on the theater. Camilla Parker Bowles has mentioned EFT in the fear of fly flying in her autobiography. Marlon Taplin is an Olympic athlete and he's often seen using EFT 
before he goes to perform in his race. And I've mentioned Whoopi Goldberg already. Some other followers of EFT, Paul McKenna, this is, this is Paul McKenna here, he's a hypnotherapist, and he uses EFT alongside hypnotherapy because he gets faster results. Uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra, the Harvard doctor and Ayurveda practitioner based out of the United States, originally Indian. He also is a follower of EFT. Gabby Bernstein, who is a health and wellness uh, coach and seminar leader. She often teaches and uses EFT for freedom from judgment. Then we have Naomi Harris, who has been known to use EFT. She's one of the Bond girls to overcome depression. And then many of you know Louise Hay. She's now passed over. She was founder of Hay House. She wrote Heal Your Life. And she was known to use EFT. And she's also been videoed by Nick Ortner, the founder of The Tapping Solution, showing the effect of EFT. Now, Candice Hurt, she actually has been awarded for all the work she's done on emotions and the impact of emotions. And so what she says is, as your feelings change, this mixture of peptides travel throughout your body and your brain, and they literally change the chem chemistry of every cell. So what is she saying? She's saying, by using a process like EFT, that physically changes our emotional state and our physical state. And so many of you put B when I was just working on constricted breathing. That, that emotional change results in a change in every single cell in our body. I mean, that's really powerful. Just wait a second, she'll just come by. It's probably a video is uh, internet connection must have just swapped a bit. Okay, so uh, yeah, but Bruce Lipton's book is also really great. Uh, it's also really great. So there's EFT and then there's clinical EFT. What do I mean by clinical EFT? Clinical EFT is, EFT is learned to be able to uncover the root cause. You see, many times people mess with me, they go, can I have the script for this? Can I have the EFT script for arthritis? Can I have the EFT script for diabetes? Can I? And I'm like, there is no script if you want to heal it. If you don't want to heal it, do surface EFT, watch a YouTube video, follow along with it. But if you really want to heal what's going on at the root cause, then learn the steps and learn how you can actually discover what the root cause is. So I've already shared my story with you that I was diagnosed with cancer. I healed. I used to get daily migraines. And with EFT, I healed that and how I've coached and supported 20,000 people worldwide to feel calm, happy, and at peace. What I want to do now is to go through the seven steps of EFT, okay? The first step of EFT is to identify the issue or the goal. The second step is to get a measure for it. Now, what's the reason to get a measure for it? Is when you have a measure of something, then you're able to tell, is it working or not? The third step is to begin by tapping on the side of the hand, and I'll explain why side of the hand in the moment. The fourth step is to tap on the upper body point. So here we'll be tapping here. The fifth step is to close the sequence. The sixth step is just to relax. And the seventh step is to test. So the first step, identify the goal or the problem. So this is where you would ask the person you're working with, what do you want? Or you would ask yourself, what do I want? Or you would ask yourself, what issue do I want to solve? Or you'd ask someone else, what issue do you want to solve if you were to learn this professionally? Then you would try and establish the theme.
Well, I come back within the second, by the way. Start tapping on the side of the hand. Start tapping on the side of the hand and say out loud, and Swati will repeat after me. Even though, even though I have this problem, I have this problem. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And you do that three times. So let's do it two more times. Even though, even though I have this problem, I have this problem. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though, even though I have this problem, I have this problem. I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway love and accept myself and then the fourth step and in fact you know have a look you can if you can see me you can have a look at me so this is the first one it is known as the eyebrow point and it's right here this is where the bladder meridian is so it releases emotional stress so you can tap along here and then the next one here is in the temple where the dip is The next one is under the eye. The next one is under the nose. Under the nose. The next one is on the chin. On the chin. I don't need to repeat it. Whoever's repeating it, I don't need to repeat it. Next one is on the chin here. And the actual point is here. Actual point is here. But that's quite hard to stick when you're talking like that, and I can't really do an air to tell you how to understand like a stupid person. So it's okay to do it here because if I'm tapping here, it has an effect on all the points that's in a hand span. So if I tap here, it benefits this tapping point here too. Okay. So the chin, then it's the collarbone. It's not on the collarbone, but underneath the collarbone. It's not on the collarbone, but it's underneath the collarbone, okay? Because if you tap on the collarbone, you're going to get really sore. So don't do that, tap underneath. And then under the arm. And then on the finger. So we've got the thumb here and it's on this side. Then it's on this side here and this side now. Some of you are asking Aparna in chat, the reason we don't tap on the ring finger. It's nothing to do with being married, by the way. <laughs> the reason we don't tap on the ring finger is the meridian is on the other side. The meridian is on the other side. And Gary Craig, who was a founder of EFT, wasn't sure if people would remember. So he just left it out completely. Now, sometimes on mistake, I do tap on it. I still haven't developed devil horns. Well, some people think I'm still a devil, but you know they haven't emerged out of my skull yet, okay? So we leave this finger out because it's also covered on the face. Then you tap the little finger, okay? So that's, that's step four. And then you would tap on these parts while saying the words out loud. And I'll give you a demonstration in a moment. And then step five, you come back here to the side of the hand known as a karate chop. The reason it's known as a karate chop is because, you know, it's used like, you know, in terms of you like use the karate chop to show off that you can break a piece of wood. But once I was working with someone and I said, we're going to tap on the karate chop. They're like, what's that? Because in the culture they were in, they'd never heard of like karate chops. And so I said, oh, we tap on the handshake point where my fingers touch your hands. So instead it can also be the handshake point, by the way. Then the step five is we come back here and we close the sequence. So Swati is gonna say out loud with me, even though, even though I have this problem, I have this problem, I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Love and accept myself. Lovely. Step six is to relax. So to breathe, but not like, <gasps> not breathing like that, but breathing like this. Just 
just a gentle breath in and out. Do that with me and then take a sip of water. Then in step six, reflect on how you're feeling. How are you feeling right now? Reflect. And then step seven is test where you ask yourself. So I would ask you, how are you feeling? What happened? And I will respond, great, whether it is worse, same or better. And the reason I respond great, whether it's worse, same or better is based on hypnotherapy, where we are rewarding the unconscious. We're rewarding the unconscious for speaking the truth of how they're feeling. Okay, let's do some live group practice as well. So write for me in chat. I want you to scan your body and write for me in chat. If you have any tension anywhere in the body, give it a number and give me the location. So scan your body. And if you have any tension anywhere, if you have any tension anywhere, so feet nine, head six, back seven, ankles, lower back eight, right shoulder eight, head six, back seven, wrist seven, head eight, shoulder eight, head five, upper back seven, shoulder eight, right shoulder blade, left shoulder, upper back seven, head four, stomach eight, knee 10, shoulder six. Okay, you've done the first step brilliantly, by the way. That's absolutely fabulous. Okay, now that you've got the location and the number, we'll just get started with a round of tapping, okay? So even though, even though, I have this tension. I have this tension. It's in my. It's in my. So you say your body part out loud with me right now. It's in my. It's in my. And it's at a number. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Let's do that a second time. Even though even though I have this tension, I have this tension. And I'll use my words right now. It's in my throat. And it's in my throat. It's a number five. It's a number five. I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Love and accept myself anyway. Even though I have this tension, even though I have this tension, it's in my throat. It's in my throat. It's literally gone down just doing that one round with all of you. And it's the number one. And it's a number one. I love and accept myself anyway. I love and accept myself anyway. It's in my throat. It's in my throat. It's at a number. It's at a number. It's in my. It's in my. It's at a number. It's at a number. In my, in my, it's at a number, it's at a number, in my, in my, it's at a number, it's at a number, it's in my, it's in my, it's at a number, it's at a number, it's in my, it's in my, it's at a number, it's at a number, even though, even though, I don't feel tension for me right now, so even though I have this tension, even though I have this tension. It's in my. It's in my. I love and accept myself anyway. I so let's it. do a temperature check. Let's do a temperature check. Give me a B in chat if you feel better. Give me a S in chat if you feel the same. And give me a W in chat if you feel worse. Wow, so many of you feeling better. Now I wanna ask this question. What is a meridian? So a meridian is like a, 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 a tube. So just like we have tubes for our blood vessels, we have these tubes which have energy in them, okay? And you can, if you do an MRI or a CT scan, you can see these subtle channels. And in these subtle channels is energy. And sometimes what happens is these subtle channels get blocked. And, and in fact, therapies like acupuncture work on the meridians, these subtle channels. And by putting needles, acupuncture needles in the body, it unblocks these subtle tubes or these subtle channels. And generally what gets blocked up, it's like if you, if you had a sink 
And in your sink, there was a pipe that drained out all the fluid from the sink. But what can happen sometimes is that sink can get blocked up because there's been more food that has gone through the pipe. And so sometimes you have to take that pressure suction to get that, you know, to get that stuff moving. Otherwise, the water cannot freely flow. So similarly in the body, energy cannot freely flow if these channels get blocked up. And EFT is actually steeped in a science like acupuncture, which is one of the most ancient, ancient therapeutic modalities in the world. The first known example of acupuncture is 2300 BC. That means acupuncture has been around for over 4,000 years, by the way. And EFT is based on a technology like, like acupuncture, except I don't know what you're like, but I don't want a lot of needles in my body. I, had, I have had it done because I go for my annual um, Ayurveda to Sri Lanka. And so I don't love, I mean, it's not my favorite uh, treatment to have. I'd much rather do tapping and then stimulate. So over here, there are these meridian points. I'd much rather stimulate the meridian points. And we have the ends of the meridian points here as well. And these points are the ends of the meridian points. And so when you stimulate them here, it basically unblocks and it starts to clear. In fact, EFT is the only touch and talk therapy that I know. We know touch is brilliant. Because as a baby, many of you would have been massaged because touch is so important for you to connect with affection and love and nourishment. We know kids that are not touched grow up with major psychological issues. The other reason children are touched at a young age is to help their bones form and bones grow so they receive massage and movement and all that kind of stuff. So we know touch is important. We know talk is also important. When you get it off your chest, you talk about it, you feel so much lighter. And EFT is combining touch and also talk. Okay, now it doesn't matter which hand you use. You can use this hand, you can use this hand, you can do it like this, you can do it like this. It doesn't really matter which hand you use, okay? Uh, we sit water. So the reason we sit water after tapping, tapping is clearing the energy system. It's gonna to release toxins, in, toxins into the blood vessels. In fact, you need to make sure you drink a whole liter of water after we finish today, by the way, to flush it out of your system. Uh, and we find people who don't drink water, they can feel like heady or, so make sure you're drinking lots and lots of water. And of course, you'll get an email tonight. You'll get a message from Daryl as well tonight on your private message in your phone, giving you these follow-ups as well so that you can be mindful of it, okay? Uh, so I think I've answered those questions. So let me go, let me... So many of you were feeling better. Okay, great. Now, let me do a live demonstration. If you would like to be part of the live demonstration, what you need to do is raise your hand. Hi, Miss Mundra. Oh, it's so great to see you here. <laughs> Go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah. Go ahead and raise your hand. If you now, if you want me to work with you, I will pick you number one. And number two, you have to have your camera on so I can see you. You have to have your camera on so I can see you. Okay. Otherwise, I cannot work with you. Now, BG2, how do I say your first name? BG2 is good. Okay, great. It is G2. 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 Okay, great. G2, whereabouts are you right now? Which part of the world? Uh, I'm in uh, Kolkata, West Bengal. Kolkata. I'm originally Bengali, but your Bengali is probably better than my Bengali. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are, we are Gujaratis being settled here for uh, long years. Now, do you like Kolkata or you miss Gujarat? I, of course I miss Gujarat. <laughs> <laughs> Nimisha is in Kolkata right now also. <laughs> so, uh, tell me, when you scan your body, where in the body is the tension and what number is it at Jitu? It is in my ca uh, calf, calf area. Huh. Calf, calf area. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, and the tension would be uh, on a scale of one to 10, it will be like, let's say seven or something. Seven. And how long have you had this for G2? Uh, thing is that I, I like to do a lot of exercises, like to walk so much. So I use a lot of, uh, a lot of my feet. So, I mean, that, that obviously like, you know, I try to, 
stretch beyond what I should have been done. And plus, I'm like, we had COVID six months back, so my allergies are a little. Okay. So, so that is that could be the 10. reason. Yeah. It's a seven on ten. It's in your carbs. Has it got a color, texture, size, shape? Color. If if it has to be a color, it has to be. It'll be red. Red. Or pinkish. Pinkish. Red. Something. Pinkish in your calf because you do a lot of physical activity. And six months ago, you had coronavirus. And uh, does it? How does it make you feel? This tension. How does it make you feel? Nothing much. I'm used to it. I'm used to it because all through my life I've been do, uh, doing workouts, and so somewhere or the other there is a pain, like in my. So you okay with it then? I I feel the tension there. Tension is more uh, this thing. You're uh, happy for the tension to stay, or you want something else to happen with the tension? No, I want to uh, make it. Uh, I mean, I want to make it go away. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> 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 tap along with me jitu yeah yeah and everybody else tap along with us and we'll check in with you how your physical tension is doing even though even though i have this tension i have this tension it's in my calf which calf is it right or left uh left it's in my left calf it's in my left calf it's 7 on 10 it's 7 on 10 it's red pinkish it it's red pinkish because i do a lot of exercise because i do a lot of exercise it gets tensed up it gets tensed up and it's been there for a long time it's been there for a long time i'm just used to it i'm just used to it i love and accept myself i love I, and accept myself even though it's red pinkish even it, though it's re red pinkish it's in my calf in my calf it's 7 on 10 It's seven on ten, and I feel a little low anyway because I had COVID. And I feel a little low anyway because I had COVID. Six months ago. Six months ago. This tension in my calves. This tension in my calves. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely. Love me, Charu. Love me. Charu. Love me. Charu. Charu. Love me. This tension in my calves. This tension in my calf. This tension in my calves. This tension in my calf. This tension in my calves. This tension in my calf. This tension in my calves. This tension in my calf. This tension in my calves. This tension in my calf. This tension in my calves. This tension in my calf. This tension in my calves. This, this red, pinkish, seven on ten tension. Oh, you need to uh, unmute, sir. Yeah. This, this red, uh, pinkish tension in my calves. This red, pinkish, seven and on ten on my in my calf. You don't want the tension. I don't want the tension. You don't want to feel the tension. I don't want to see the tension. I don't like the tension. I don't like the tension. I want the tension to go away. I I want the tension to go away. Even though even though I have this tension in my calves. I have this tension in my calves. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Love and accept myself. Love to be doing so great. I want you to hold this point now. Do them. Pani hai wahan pe. Take a little sip of water. Yeah, I'll just go and get. Okay. So while he's doing that, I want the rest of you to write and chat for me. Whether you feel better than before, give me a B. Whether you feel the same as before, give me an S. Whether you feel worse than before, give me a W. Yeah. So Shilpa moves from the right knee to the right thigh. This is normal. And if anyone has a question, you can also uh, put it in chat. This is known as chasing the pain. That basically moves the energy is 
moving in your body. So that there were any questions, maybe just give me one by one in private chat. Um, so for hair fall Krupa, what I recommend is you actually do this. You actually do this for hair fall. And then for hair fall, I used to have a big bald patch over here. So I'll get Devdatta to also put a message out for all of you on hair fall. Because the last time I did the seminar, I explained it to people. So we have a question and answer about hair. I used to have an alopecia, a bald patch here. And in part, it was hormonal. And like now my hair has like growing back and it's, you know, I've had no cut because of Corona and it's getting straggly at the bottom also. And so it, for me, it was to do with self-esteem. So I did the tapping on the self-esteem. And then the third thing I did every day, I would say I would do positive tapping. Jitu? Huh. Jitu, welcome back. Give me a number. Give me a number now for the calf. What number is the calf tension at? Um, would be two or something? Two? Wow. That is just incredible. Yeah, it will be two. Yeah, because, yeah, I could realize because when I uh, went to uh, fetch water, get water from me like i could feel that yeah thank you so much sir that was just amazing you were just fabulous well thank done you so thank you so much thank you very much yeah, yeah so, pleasure. Much. so i would just keep doing this you know if it if anything you have a need for any tension just do this okay beautiful yeah i love okay. it yeah thank Lovely. you so much pleasure jesus thank you so much okay who else go ahead and raise your hand has any physical tension in their body. For me to move you forward, you have to be able to have your video on, otherwise I cannot move you forward. Yeah, Shraddha Agarwal, go ahead and unmute. Great. Hi, so, Ranga. Shraddha. Hi, Shraddha, great to see you. Where yeah. in the body, scan your body, where in the body is the tension? Left shoulder. Left shoulder, what number is it at? Eight. Eight, okay. Even though, even though the tension is my left shoulder, the tension in my left shoulder, and it's a number eight, and it's number eight, and the color is, and the color is deep red, deep red, and it makes me feel, and it makes me feel frozen, not able to move forward, frozen, not able to move forward. I love and accept myself. Anyway. I love and accept myself. Even though even though it makes me feel so frozen. It makes me feel so frozen. Like I am not able to move. Like I am not able to move. I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Makes me feel so frozen. It makes me feel so frozen. Really frozen. Really frozen. I'm just not able to move forward. I am just not able to move forward. It's an eight on 10. It's an eight on 10. It's red in color. Red in color. So frozen. So frozen. Really frozen. Really frozen. So frozen. So frozen. Really frozen. Really frozen. So frozen. So frozen. Really frozen. Really frozen. The shoulder pain. This tension in my shoulders. Tension in my shoulders. I love and accept myself. I love anyway. and accept myself. Shraddha, you're doing so great. Hold this point. Breathe in and out. Take a sip of water. Lovely, Shraddha. Measure it. Is it higher than an eight? Same as an eight or less than an eight? Less than eight. Much less than eight. Isn't really that feel light? I'm feeling light here. You know, it seems as if somebody has just taken off my package. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that incredible? Thank you. Thanks so to you. Much. Thank you so much to you and your team.
<laughs> Thank you so much. That's just incredible. Good. Who else? Go ahead and raise the hand and I'll bring you forward. Yeah, my neck pain is gone, Sonali. Thank you so much for sharing that. Chitra, where is Chitra? Chitra had put a hand up earlier as well. Vishwa Dhara, you also wrote to me in Facebook. Thank you so much for writing to me in Facebook and sharing with me. So Vishwa Dhara, if you scan your body now, what number is the tension at? Uh, it's at about nine. Nine. Okay, let's nine. Go. And it's in the center of my heart. Center of your heart, number nine. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. It feels like an ancient pain. It doesn't feel in this lifetime. It feels like you've had it for a long time. This pain makes you feel what? Yeah. Stay with me. You're okay. Guys, can you all tap under the eye? Everyone together, tap under the eye, collarbone, under the arm. This is known as a triple point karma when you get emotional. Emotions are normal. Vishwadhara, what she's doing right now is brilliant. She's just releasing suppressed emotions. So that's fabulous. Doing great, just under the eye. Lovely. So it's in the center of your chest. Yes. It's at a number nine. And what's the emotion there? Uh, it's like as if my heart is constricted. It's like a tight pain. Yeah. And um, how, how long have you felt it for right now? How long have you like, felt it for right now? Uh, at least uh, last one year. Thank you. Even though I've had this for last one year, even though I've had it for the last one year. I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Even though whatever happened really hurt me. Even though whatever happened really hurt me. And it shattered my heart. It shattered my heart. And it broke me. It broke me. I'm open to the possibility. I'm open to the possibility. Possibility. Of feeling loved anyway. Of feeling loved anyway. Nine on ten. Nine on ten. Center of the heart. Center of the heart. It feels like my heart is being, what did you say? It's like as if it's being churned. Yeah, my heart is being churned and constricted. My heart is being churned and constricted. I want you to bring into your awareness. You don't need to let me know the name of the person. I want you to bring into your awareness the person who made you feel like your heart was being constricted. And All right, I will give it a short time. How do I? I don't need to know the name of the person, but just let me know. Give me a code word for them, any code word, like light, chair, table, any code word. Mattress. Good. Even though mattress. Even though mattress. Constricted my heart. Constricted my heart. And made me feel so, what was it, suffocated? Yes, constricted and churned. Broke churned. my heart. I love and accept myself. Even though mattress I, made me feel constricted and churned. Even though mattress made me feel constricted and churned. And I've been feeling this for the last year. I've been feeling this for the last year. And it's in my heart. In my heart. The center of my heart. Center of my heart. It's a nine on ten. It's a nine on ten. I love and accept myself anyway. I love and accept myself anyway. Center of my heart. Center of my heart. Mattress made me feel really churned. Mattress made me feel really churned. Mattress made me feel really constricted. Mattress made me feel really constricted. Really churned. Really churned. Really constricted. Really constricted. So churned. So churned. 
So constricted. So constricted. All this constriction. All this constriction. In my heart. In my heart. It's over now. It's over now. It's in the past. It's in the past. It's not happening again. It's not happening again. Because I've learned from it. Because I've learned from it. I know what I want. I know what I want. I've learned from it. I've learned from it. Good. Well done. Check in with your heart. Breathe in and out. Notice what the heart is feeling. What's the constriction like? What's the churned up feeling like? What number is it at now? It's at one. It's like completely calm down. That's beautiful. Fabulous. You are so great. You are so amazing, Rangana ji. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you so and much. And I've, I've been blessed by Revati, who's helped me through the entire journey last one year. Revati is absolutely incredible. I'm so grateful yes. you found Revati. So she's, a, she's a dear friend also. She's a childhood friend. And, and coming in contact with you through her has been a divine blessing. My grandmother also has been a great devotee of Sai. So I think it's that long drawn connection. And all my sessions happen on a Thursday. Oh. So I'm so, so grateful to you. Om Saira. So, so, Om Saira. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely. Let me share a little bit more with you and then I will come back for questions. So as you have just seen with those three short demonstrations with EFT, what it's essentially doing if you're feeling, hey Sneha, it is great to see you by the way, it's been a while since I've seen you, so welcome. What actually happens is the energy gets disrupted. And then when you use EFT, you like go, oh. and then you feel this sense of relief because now your meridians have got unblocked and you're like, oh, feel okay now. And some of you might be yawning. Give me a while for you. Some of you are like, oh, or sleepy, this is normal because your body wants you to take in oxygen, wants you to rest and relax. Here are some other examples of people who experienced EFT. I mean, you, show, you saw in front of you within minutes an, an effect happened. This was Dr. Rajesh from Mumbai. He was a naturopathic doctor. He came in my training in Mumbai and his age old back pain basically went in 20 minutes during the physical tension and then now, he shares EFT with his patients and he finds that in 70 to 80% of the cases, the pain has gone in one session after he learned EFT, where now he's made EFT his main form of treatment versus before naturopathy was his main form of treatment. This is Sejal Mehta. She's a counselor in Mumbai. She came on training on day one. I taught them how to release stress in the morning, physical tension. What I just taught you, I teach people in my training, how can they do it for themselves and how can they do it for other people? And so I taught her that on day one. And then the afternoon I taught, how do you work with a past memory? She went home that night and she started to, because she found she still had this like debilitating muscle pain in her body. And she just used the tapping process on herself, what I taught her during that one day, which is very basic and simple. And she uncovered something that had happened to her years prior, something emotional. And she worked through it on her own. And she came in the next day and she told me, she said, I don't have fibromyalgia pain anymore. But she also said she noticed an attitudinal shift. So she's a psychologist by background. So she described it psychologically to me. This is Purnima. She came on the very same training you're attending with me right now in Mumbai. It was live in person and her husband literally forced her to take it. And the swelling in her body basically disappeared. Her husband came on the professional training and every day he would do like a prescription tapping for her versus giving her a pill to help her edema, you know, not cause discomfort for her because she had something going on in her pituitary. Now, this was um, Avni. She came on my training in the United Kingdom. This was her before picture. This is her after picture when she lost 20 kgs in weight in 12 weeks. And when she came after she learned EFT training, she basically used the tapping process to commit to a health nutrition program that felt kind to her body, that felt aligned with her soul. And she lost 20 kgs in 12 weeks. 
This is Daisy who attended our training also in India and she helped her husband, not her husband, a child, her son, overcome his learning disability where she did EFT with him. And then she noticed that her son was so much better and so much more at ease and was able to do much better in school. This was Emma, she did our training in the United Kingdom and she had a craving of Galaxy, a chocolate bar. And so when she learned, she came, she came twice to my training. The first time she came, she overcame the chocolate bar. The second time she came to training, she overcame cake. Now I got a, not a very nice message from her son though. It's like, Rangana, my mother doesn't order chocolate cake anymore at birthday parties. So I get that kind of, oh, how dare you? How dare you remove someone's, you know, craving. This is Sri, he attended our training in Delhi and he'd been carrying 28 years of emotional pain. And I still remember this session, it was live in person. It was on day three, he was on the main stage and he literally let go of so much emotional pain where he felt lighter and more at ease in himself. This was Smita, who is also a astrologer. She's currently in Southeast Asia. And when I met her, she said, I've never felt happy. I was just existing. And then months later, she submitted, she became an EFT practitioner. She sent me a, this long note. And she said, after EFT, I found my purpose and I found my happiness. I never thought something could actually make me feel that happy. This was Sadhana from Iran. She came on our training in uh, Delhi and she was a yoga teacher. She was learning yoga in Rishikesh. And what she, so she just, she never came for any specific thing. She was a yoga teacher. She wanted to be an EFT practitioner. She didn't really have major things she was working through. She just went through, you know, the days. Months later, she came back and I was giving a free seminar at Zorba the Buddha in Gurgaon in Delhi. And she comes up to me and she goes, Rang and I went back to Iran. And I opened that old box of photographs and I no longer felt sad. I no longer felt the pain and the anger. And I never realized EFT gave me that. So, so some people they'll learn it and then they'll realize months later, like with me, with my migraines, like months later, when I look back, I go, I don't have migraines anymore and how life changes. So I wanna to talk to you about the surface versus the root cause. So we have something known as surface symptoms. So in my case, I had headaches and then we have a deeper root cause. Uh, with v Vishwadhara, I wasn't necessarily working on the surface. I was working with her energetically more on the deeper root cause, but I was also really maintaining her privacy so she wouldn't feel uncomfortable. And so, you know, when you cut through the deeper layers, that, that particular aspect, it starts to heal at the highest level. So in my case, I used to have daily headaches and it made me feel helpless. These were the surface symptoms. But the deeper root cause, what put the headache in place was I had a belief I must not feel helpless. I must not feel weak. I must feel strong no matter what. I cannot say no, you know, and I wanted my dad's approval and I felt I must prove myself. And so when I worked on the must proving myself, the inability to say no, and I worked on the dad's approval, I didn't work directly on the headaches. I did something on his personal piece, which I teach in my training. And I, that's when I noticed the daily headaches went bit by bit. Now, this was an incredible case of a lady, her name's Elsa Bullo. She came to our training in Bali and she had such difficulty walking into a room to a children's party with balloons. And if there were balloons up, she would immediately want to leave that children's party. And she came on my training and I said, anybody here, you know, have a fear of phobia? And she kind of hesitantly put her hand up and she goes, mm, you know, balloons, but you know, I don't really want to work on it. It's okay. You know, I don't want to be traumatized again. And so she said, come on, let, let, let's just, just, just explore it. And we started to explore it. And she uncovered a memory of being in East Timor. East Timor is a part in Southeast Asia that was war, you know, a war zone. And one day she was at home and her house was invaded. And it was invaded by militants who started to use their guns and she ran underneath the house. You know, the Southeast Asian houses, you have like wooden boards and you can, you know, there's a space between, you know, because it can be earthquake zone. I remember in Hong Kong, I had that. 
And the sound of the gun, you know, which any child or any adult would feel fearful about. And as she noticed the blood drip through, you know, the wooden cracks, the trauma just went inside her being. And so every time she saw a balloon, what happened? If you know, tell me in chat. What happened was she was scared the balloon would pop. And the sound of the pop reminded her of what? The sound of the gunfire. Now with her, it was a longer session. I don't want to be, I don't want to be dishonest to you. It was one hour. This was not a one minute wonder. We worked with lots of different techniques, little bit by little bit, safely, gently. She felt drained at the end. She was like, oh, I just wanna lie down. I wanna sit down. It was like as if she'd been in the dry cleaners and the washing machine and years of emotional trauma just left her body. And she just felt like, can I go lie down? I checked in with her the next day and she's like, I'm feeling really tender and I just let it be. I didn't test, you know, how's your balloon? Because there's something known as being kind to someone. Months later, she came on my NLP training in Bali. She, she goes, I want to come and sit on the couch because I normally have this couch. I want to come sit on the couch. And she goes into a pocket and she picks out a yellow balloon and she goes, and she blows it. You can see, she goes, no fear. No fear, no fear. And she laughs. And to this day, she attributes this to EFT where her life changed. So maybe you're someone who's here because you want to make a difference to someone else's life, not just to learn it for yourself. Maybe you'd like to get professionally qualified because there's an Elsa out there waiting for your magic. Just like Revati was Vishvadhara's angel that she found and helped her and supported her. Maybe there are people that are like, I can't wait for you to learn this. I remember one of our students, her name is Sanjana. She posted on our WhatsApp group, a testimonial she received from a client of hers, letting her know, thank you so much for EFT. And she said, I've always seen other healers and counselors receive testimonials. I never thought that I could learn something that would be so quick and rapid and the results would be immediate and someone would wanna send me something like that. Um, this is Uma, she overcame her fear of public speaking. Again, this is now root cause examples that I'm giving you where there was a surface fear, you know, a waterfall from the hair, uh, sweaty palms, difficulty to speak. And then she worked on the deeper layers of the humiliation, the embarrassment. And then at the end of class, she stood up in front of everyone in our small training room in Bangalore. And she spoke to all of us, which she would never have been able to do before. And can you imagine if you're a corporate professional, like we do a lot of work with corporates to help them overcome their fear of public speaking. In fact, one of our, one of our practitioners in Bangalore, he's worked with 3000 employees in FMCG companies in Bangalore, where he just works with them 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, not long sessions to help them overcome their fears and particularly fear of public speaking. Can you imagine if your promotion was being held up because you can't speak in public, you can't do a presentation in front of your peers and your superiors, and you feel so crippled by it right here in your throat and with something like EFT, you can overcome it. We had another Uma, actually, she was a gynecologist. She came on our training in Delhi and I have a video of it as well. She hadn't driven in 15 years because she had a fear of driving. And she had a driver, she you know, progressed a lot in life. She had this big white car and we were in the club in Mumbai. And she, she, said, I, she said, I wanna practice. And I was out there with her just to make sure it's safe and it's okay, she's not gonna have a nervous breakdown. You know? So I was out there with her and she got in the car and the only issue she had is the car was an automatic. And when she learned it was a gear stick and she wasn't used to the button because nowadays the new cars have the button and not the keys. And she drove right in front of us while the driver sat next to her, by the way. Panic attacks gone, this is Shalini Bullock. And you know she came on one of her advanced level EFT training where she was scared to go on the underground. And she used to have these panic attacks. And I remember we did this one technique with her that involved holding the index finger and allowing her to really feel, because she also had a history of um, suddenly going into an altered state. And she said like time froze still. And she sent me a message saying, I can travel on the underground and the Metro now, which she couldn't before. 
So these are root cause. This is when we're working at a deeper level. This was Marie Christie from Lanzarote. I did a training in Spain and she had a fear of confined spaces. She was too scared to get into a cupboard. And in the training room, we had this cupboard there. And the person whose hand you can see on the door, her name's Sidra. Some of you might know Sidra Jaffrey. She was the one who gave the session. She'd come to learn training with me. She's, a, she's now passed over, but she's a celebrity speaker. And within 15 minutes, Marie Christie got in that cupboard and said, close the door, I'm okay with it. And she overcame. And you know why she had a fear of confined spaces? You know how in Benares and countries like Spain, they have these short lanes. And she got stuck in these short lanes and that's what caused the issue. This was Apurva. She's right now in the United States. She learned EFT and then she came in my inner child training as well. She did like a seven day training with me and she used tapping on herself. This did not happen live in class, by the way. She learned it, she used it on herself and then she noticed the symptoms of her thyroid came down and the medical examination confirmed that to her. We've had many with PCOS, many with diabetes, many with um, ovarian uh, challenges who when they work and they get to the root cause of the emotion, their symptoms disappear. EFT has been used for anxiety, boredom, claustrophobia, depression, guilt, headaches, insomnia, beliefs, love pain, physical attack, panic attack, sadness, shame, sexual abuse, self-image. In fact, if any of you specialize with sexual abuse or like you work in domestic violence or sexual abuse, it's a passion area of mine because I want to build a sanctuary in Mumbai for people who are abused so they can come and be rehabilitated. It's incredible, you know, with EFT. I work with people who lost people in September 11th and you never think they'd be able to overcome the grief of it. Um, sports issue, trauma, war memories, phobias, public speaking, dental phobias as well. So there's so many different things EFT can be used for. Now, this is examples of some of our counselors. This is Divya, she's a counselor, she's an EFT practitioner. And she, what she found with EFT is her clients overcome trauma in a much shorter span of time. This here, let me just stop share because uh, the, the, the color has gone across. Let me stop, okay. This was near, this was the guy I was talking about that's worked with 3000 people in corporates. And again, he'd done everything. He'd learned coaching. He'd learned so many tools and techniques as a trainer. And he said, this is the first one where I got a surefire shift really quick, as short as a few minutes. Because when you, when you can help your clients rapidly clear something, what does that mean to you? You get more free time. You, know, you don't have to worry about having clients that are unhappy with you. You feel more fulfilled in yourself. This was Anushree Shah. She also was a counseling psychologist. She became qualified as an EFT practitioner. She found negative emotions are released faster and it's in a safe way where sometimes someone who might be doing psychotherapy can take years and years before they find a tangible shift. We had a father, Leo, also come, who was a counseling psychologist. And he said, Rangana, from what I have learned with EFT with us, he said, I can help my patient which normally takes them 12 months to get over. I can take them no more than three months and they're finished and they're done with it. And, and he said, it's also a technique because he was a reverend, like a father, like a religious reverend, you know, Christian reverend. And he said, and it fits so much with my belief system, my spiritual belief systems, because it's all about love and accept myself. And there's nothing greater, he said, in his spiritual belief than loving and accepting people and humanity. Okay, so in summary, what I've covered so far is stress can lead to disease and illness. Unresolved emotional upsets can cause disease. Suppressing emotions is harmful to health. And I'm gonna open up for questions in a moment. If you've got questions for me, write them in the chat. I will stay as long as I answer all the questions. By releasing stress and freeing suppressed emotions and resolving the past upset, you can create health and wellness. I've also shared with you the clinical data for EFT, as well as the steps to the EFT process as well. So let me ask you this in chat right now. Many of you are already messaging me in direct and you're asking, can I learn it? Can I learn it for myself? Can I reverse my diabetes? So let me just check what people actually want. Give me a P in chat if you would like to learn more about how can you learn it to help others? 
Give me an S in chat if you would like to learn how can you help EFT as a self-help program to help yourself. Okay, lovely. Can I have your permission now? Give me a 100 in chat. Can I have your permission to answer these questions now on the P and the S, please? Can you give me a 100 so then I can answer these questions right now? Okay. So you have three steps available next, okay? Let me give you the summary first. So the summary with EFT is become aware of where you're at. Identify what the issue is, the challenge, ask yourself questions, measure it, and then use the tapping sequence. Even though I have this problem, I love and accept myself. Use the tapping points on the upper body and fingers to clear it. And then what you do is you close by using the closing sequence. And then you breathe and you test it. So the three options you have available, there is a first option as well, and you can write it in chat as well, which is to refresh. So give me an R in chat if you'd like to watch the replay. And what we'll do is we'll give you a link. In fact, Daryl will send you a private message when we finish today. And he'll give you a link where you can, you can have a look at a manual that we've created for you will make the replay available to you tomorrow. You'll receive a replay tomorrow of today, so you can watch it again. And Nimisha will send you a message tomorrow on the WhatsApp, giving you information about the replay. The next day, she'll send you a message about how you do the negative release. The next day, she'll send you a message how to do the six count breathing. The next day, she'll send you another message on the WhatsApp group. So if you fall in that refresh replay category, just make sure you put an R and we'll make sure that you get that email so that you can read the manual. The second is you wanna help others. So this is those who put P in chat where you wanna make a difference to the lives of others. Now, let me talk about this. Your next step on the P is to book something known as a discovery call where Nimisha will have a conversation with you and she will explain to you everything involved with practitioner training. Let me briefly explain it to you right now as well for those of you who wanna help others. Now you can do practitioner training for two reasons. One reason you can do it is because you want to heal yourself. This is known as your personal development track. The second reason you can do it is because you want to become professionally qualified. Hey Hamida, great to see you after such a long time. The second reason is because you want to be, get professionally qualified. Now, the way we've, we've done the whole program is you attend six days of training, 12 days of training with myself in July. It's my last one that I'm going to be doing for some time because I'm moving away from live in-person training because I want to focus on doing my book and building the, the charity and the sanctuary. And so we have a 12-day training in uh, July, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four Friday, Saturday, Sundays in a row. And it's in the afternoon, 2.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. IST. And then I will go through how do you work with physical tension? How do you work with a past memory? I will go through how do you work with a limiting belief? How do you clear a fear and phobia? Like all the examples I gave you, you'll learn how to use it on yourself and other people. And so what will happen is if you fall in that P category, in a moment, I'm going to give you, Nimisha is in a moment, is going to give you a link on the Zoom chat where you can book a conversation with Nimisha. Nimisha has done the training and she's spoken to lots of different people who want to, and first she's going to ask you, what do you want? And she's going to first establish, do you want personal development or practice? What's the reason you want it? Because she's trying to gauge, is this the right thing for you or not? She wants to make sure it's aligned. We don't just want anyone to come. It's not for people of casual interest. It's people who really want to learn this either for their own healing. I never learned to become a practitioner. I never imagined I'd be a trainer one day. I learned to heal myself and to heal my migraines, by the way. I became a practitioner by accident. Then I went on to become a trainer. And now I, I train trainers and facilitators as well. Then if you're like, yeah, yeah, I wanna find out more. She will explain to you how there are eight different modules in the program. The first module is the 12 days training. The, sorry, the six days training. The second module is the remaining six days training. The third module is six one-to-one -one sessions with our top notch practitioners, by the way, they're known as senior practitioners. 
where you get six therapeutic sessions with them. For those who come on practitioner track, you get one mentoring session with them. You get 18 hours of mentoring in a group environment with either myself or the senior practitioners and the mentors where you hands-on learn the practitioner skills. This module is not included for those on personal development. You're part of a Facebook community. In fact, Manisha just waved to me. She was just messaging me today. And she said, you know, Rangana, it's because I'm part of this community that I feel I can heal. I feel I can, do you want to share Manisha with them? So, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so I was doing my personal peace procedure and I have this back pain from very long. It's approximately six to seven years. And I was doing my personal peace procedure for the back pain. And uh, I discovered that I was very lonely deep inside. And I always uh, needed the love and uh, support from my uh, mother and my husband. But uh, I, I still get those goosebumps while speaking. Mm. And then I discovered that uh, I was expecting the love and support who needed my love and support. And I had this community in front of me where I can go, I can be myself, I, I can tell whatever is there within me without being judged. Beautiful. I, I have no words to, to express. I have got the, all the love and support. It was there in front of me and I was just denying. Thank you for sharing. And so you're part of a community where you feel loved, supported, safe, and you don't feel judged, okay? And people support each other. So if you would like to do that, um, go ahead and click on this link that Namisha has given you, and I'll show you what that link looks like in a moment. Now, if you're here because you want to self-heal, you've got two options. One is to come on the EFT practitioner training as part of your personal development, because it's very holistic and thorough. Some people, though, they don't necessarily want to make that kind of a commitment in terms of 12 days. And so they want to do things at their own pace. So I have a 21 day program known as EFT Freedom Tapathon, where you have access to 21 days of videos that you can watch in your own time, where every day I do a different emotion, basically. So anger, fear, sadness, hurt, guilt. And then you can tap along to that. And then we meet on a monthly basis, once a month, where either me or one of our senior practitioners host those sessions. So if, if, if self-healing is something you want to come on and you don't necessarily want to dive deep and clear the root cause of things, then the 21-day Freedom Tapathon program is right for you. Uh, now, let me show you what some of these links look like. Just give me a second. Let me stop sharing. And let me just pull it up properly. I just want to show you what you're going to get in terms of your manuals and videos and things like that. Now, I'd love it if you would say hi to me on Facebook. So Nimisha, can you just let them know if they want to say hi, you can tag me, you can take a picture right now. You can let, let me know that we met. If I haven't yet answered your question, so Nimisha will just give you my Facebook and then Aparna and Nidhi will also give it to you in the group. So just pop along to my Facebook and say hi. Now, this is what you'll get. So you've got the, you've got the information on the three next steps. We'll add the recording by tomorrow morning from today. Here we have posted a previous frequently asked questions. Uh, so if I click on this, and many of you had questions today, like what is emotional freedom technique? How does EFT tapping work? Who is it for? What's the clinical evidence? Uh, we have therapeutic questions as well. If I keep going. And then the team will add the questions you asked today to this. Are acupuncture and EFT related? Are they different? Uh, you've got questions on here about weight, about work-related stress, about arthritis, about uh, tapping points. You have access to that Q&A. 
And then you have access to this manual here as well. If I click on this manual, this is a manual you have access to, which basically summarizes. Some people like to read, they don't like to watch a video. So it summarizes the tapping points here. And then the, this particular slide that I did with you today is also available here if you click on presentation. And then if you have questions for me that for some reason you don't ask me today, you can click on EFT Tapping Heels and you can go to the Facebook group. In fact, if you're not part of the Facebook group, you can join the Facebook group. I'm on there on a daily basis. I'm happy to answer your questions. So Michelle will give you the EFT Tapping Heels link now as well. So you can add yourself to that. Then let me show you, is this feeling good? Give me a 100 if it's feeling good that you can have access to all that stuff. Thank you, Usha. Thanks, Anmai. Thanks a lot. Okay, and let me show you the next thing now. Okay. Okay, let me just do screen share. So this is the link that Namisha has given you. When you click on this link, a pop-up will come where you put your name, last name, email ID, and phone number. You click on book my discovery call. She has 15 of these available over the next week. So if you'd like to be able to have that conversation with her, just go ahead and click on it, fill that in. It'll open up into a calendar page where you can pick a time that's suiting you. If you haven't got a time on there that's suiting you, just send her a message. She'll post her phone details again. And on this link, you've got more information about the different modules, what is covered, uh, what you can expect from training. So you can have a look through that link as well. Now I'll open up for any questions. Give me some of your questions that you have for me. So that can you begin with some of the questions that came through so I can start answering them. Yeah, um, so people have asked for different physical labels from itching to thyroid or in hormonal imbalance to back pain. Um, Can we just go one at a time, Sudha, please? So give okay. me the the question, the top question right now. Okay, fine. Um, does verbal abuse cause pain? How does EFT help? Okay, if the person who answered the question can unmute and just share with me whether it's verbal uh, whether it's causing physical pain or not. But verbal abuse can absolutely cause physical and emotional pain, both. Verbal abuse can feel like you've been in a car crash, by the way, and it can cause seismic levels of pain. And what I would recommend with EFT is you work with the surface symptoms of the verbal pain, and then you work on the deeper root cause of it. And, um, and then as you work on the deeper root cause, the, the final part is to work on positive tapping to get yourself in a frame that even though I have been verbally abused, that was then, this is now, I'm open to the possibility of loving myself anyway, and move, move on from it. So then there's one more thing I forgot to share with people. Let me just share that first. You can access one more thing. And what you can access is we have a feedback form that we would like you to fill in, which Nimisha is gonna put on chat right now. And when you fill in this feedback form as our gift to you, can you see the website? Is the website visible? So that you need to tell yes. me yes or no. My yes, friend. yes. Okay. okay, so when you go, what you will have access to, we will so, go back. Hey. So. We will give you access to a page as our gift to you where you can get a video. So uh, this is a live in person uh, EFT class. I did a tech talk with Pete Stapleton, who's done the research, a BBC video on overcoming fear of flying. You'll get videos on how to boost your energy, how to breathe freely. You'll get articles on the science. You'll get uh, information on does EFT work or not. You'll get access to different blogs on anxiety, nervousness, fears and phobias, cravings, workplace stress. You'll also get uh, information on how to work with children and autistic children. Uh, if you are on the practitioner track, you'll get information how to get started with clients. 
You'd also get something known as tapping protocols as well, where you can click on these links and then you can follow along with some of the tapping sequences and then you'll get access to real life stories. So if you would like to fill the feedback form in, number one, just to let us know your experience, or number two, to be able to access some of those resources, can you just give me an F in chat? And so then I can make sure that we get you uh, the feedback form to fill in. And Nimisha will post that feedback form to you right now. And so then you can have access to those resources. Okay, and then the final thing, those of you who wanted to come on the self help program, this is what it looks like it's a 21 day program. Where, for example, let me scroll down. Our uh, day one is introduction to EFT day two is releasing anger day three is embracing fear day four is healing sadness day five is overcoming hurt day six is freeing guilt. Day seven is healing grief or loss. Day eight is dissolving anxiety, worry, betrayal, resentment, frustration, irritation. And so if you want to access the this program, you want to put TAP in chat, TAP in chat. So then Nimisha will have a conversation with you about that. Okay, so then what's the next question? Um, will adoption be PTSD? Will what? Adoption. So this was in relation. Understand. So this was in relation when you were talking about PTSD. Somebody asked will the question. Adoption result in PTSD. Yeah, will adoption is is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had a, there's something on a survivor something, uh survivor's guilt. So we've worked with twins, for example, who were also adopted. But what happened is one of the twin passed over. And so she had trauma of the twin passing over, but she also had trauma of the adoption as well because she wasn't with her birth parents. So she felt very rejected. So uh, adoption can cause a sense of rejection. What else? Can someone help in my overthinking and anger? Yeah, we can get someone to help you in your overthinking and anger. Do we know who this person is? It would be on the chat, so we will get it. Yeah, so whoever did that, uh, Nimisha will send you a message. We have uh, professional certified practitioners that can work with you on that. And if you decide to come on the training, you'll absolutely work through overthinking and anger. I can guarantee you that right now. Let me take some questions from the floor as well. Who'd like to unmute and ask me your question? Just unmute and have a chat with me. Who'd like to just ask me your question? Just unmute Hi, and ask me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Actually, lovely to connect. <laughs> Tell me. Same. Actually, I feel so blessed talking to you in person. <laughs> I never thought this day would come. If anyone else wants to ask your life question, just put your hand up and so then we'll move you in one by one. Okay. Yeah. Tell me. So I had a doubt that when we are performing EFT together with someone or for someone, is it possible that we open ourselves to their trauma and we can actually start connecting or, you know, we might take on their patterns or something like that? Like, could there be some exchange? you can take on stuff that is your stuff so how do i explain that if you've got unresolved trauma inside that you haven't worked through their stuff can feel sticky like it's sticking to you and so we would recommend you do something on this personal piece where you clear your own stuff at the same time as working with the client but you cannot pick up the client's stuff it's impossible if there isn't a button in you now you can be an empath and as an empath, you can pick up, you can become aware so it, of the client. As an empath, is it safe for me to do all this without first resolve, resolving my own stuff? Because I have felt this uh, once. I actually felt suffocated so much by the other person. This, it kind of lingered on me for a few days. It was in, even a nightmare. It's I felt as if I was living, living their trauma. And so I felt maybe I've done one. this while I was um, performing EFT with them. So maybe I opened myself to it unconsciously. I don't know, but it felt like that to me. Maybe it was Number my one, own stuff I couldn't relate. Yeah. Number one, we would recommend, I, I, rec I, teach, I teach our students something known as a figure of eight detachment. So we would recommend you do a detachment from you and your client anyway, all the time. So as you're a work in progress that nothing is going to speak to you. So that's number one. 
Number two, if you recognize something happening, we would recommend using the deeper inner child work to clear your trauma at the same time as seeing the client. And then number three, we would also work on you not getting so affected by it because there's a specific way that you can clear the not being affected. And there's gonna be a belief underneath that, a belief about wanting to help or wanting to do the right thing. So we need that cleared up front so that you can have freedom. And I'd recommend every time you finish with a client, you go snip, snip, and you cut the energy and you cut the cord. And when our practitioners come at the advanced level EFT3, I teach them you know, how to be friendly, but yet, detach, to not take on the emotion of the client because we have to have good boundaries. And even if someone's an empath and they pick up all the emotions, once they learn how to have good boundaries, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an empath. I used to be affected by other people's emotions because I didn't and know that. And you want to help them so much that you now don't even realize sometimes. I will guarantee you, Shruti, that if you decide to embark on a deeper healing journey, that you will be able to lift this thing about helping. I don't think it belongs in this lifetime, Shruti. I believe it's a lifetime's, lifetime's thing where the program has come in with you. And I guarantee you within three months, you will not have that program anymore. I can truly connect to you. You know, the moment you actually told me that I can disconnect it and the power lies with me, I actually started feeling safe. <laughs> Trust me. Because uh, that incident, it kind of left me feeling insecure, unsafe. <laughs> and I couldn't do it for anyone else after that. I only would perform EFT for me, but I'd stop doing it for others. <laughs> Thank you so I'm much. I'm grateful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm grateful too. Yeah, let me have Preeti. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my question is that... Um, like I've been um, uh, dealing with uh, anxiety now for almost 10 years since my child was born. And there's also a lot amount of childhood trauma. And so when I am trying to do EFT for myself, is it, um, I mean, for how long does one do like a session for oneself? That was one question. And the second one was that there are some days when, when one wakes up with such low energy that you don't even have energy to even, you know, open your eyes. And uh, how does one do EFT then to kind of, you know, just at least be able to sit so up? Have you learned EFT professionally? Uh, no. I so, just attended your boosted program. So one I would recommend, if you want to use it on yourself to work through anxiety, if you want to use it as a top up on a daily, then continue to do what I taught you in boosted, which is probably more energy yoga versus EFT tapping. Because when I was doing the EFT tapping with you guys, Preeti, honestly, I was connecting with your energy and I was feeling your statements and saying it. And so the reason I'd recommend le learn it for yourself is you've got to learn how to work on the surface anxiety first, which is the symptoms. Is it, what do you have? Heart racing, overthinking, sweaty palms? What do you have? So, yes, so it's, uh, it's, it's heart racing. It is very drowsy eyes. So I can't keep my eyes open, but when I shut my eyes, my brain is, so this is making known stories. As narcotization. This is known as narcotization because the emotion has come up. It's too much for me to handle. So I put myself to sleep, except in your case, the wiring is just tell me yes or no. I don't want the incident. Did something happen to you in childhood? Yeah, I mean, uh... Um, yeah, I mean, I have, I have a very strict father, so... Uh, and did you feel fearful? Yeah, so surface, step one would be surface symptoms. Step two would be root cause. And I'd want you to learn how to work on the root cause. And some of the stuff's going to be with a strict father and how that put fear. See, we, we don't know sometimes when we're parents what fear we are putting into our child because your father's archetype seems like a teacher archetype. Whereas your archetype feels like a soft little girl, you know, that just wanted to be loved and held and you're okay and you're fine and great. And he wasn't being strict to make you feel anxious. He was probably being strict because he wanted to know he was doing the right thing. And so at the root cause level would be working at, and I want you to use a technique called the movie technique, something called tell the story and tell us trauma to clear it at the root cause level. And then the third 
thing with anxiety, you've already learned the thumb hold, you know? So the thumb hold every day, as often as you remember, and then to close it with positive tapping sequences. I don't wanna give you a false impression that what you've learned in Boosted is gonna heal the anxiety from the root cause. If you wanna heal it from the root cause, you've gotta work on the memories. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, lovely Preeti, thank you so much. Lovely to connect with you. I'm so grateful you came back here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good, who else? Yeah. Hi, Dr. Prachi. Gosh, it's been such a long time. How are you? Unmute, Dr. Prachi. It's lovely to see yes. you. Uh, Where are you can, now? I am in Pune only right now. You are in Pune because uh, I know Bangalore and then you moved to Pune. So now Pune permanently? Uh, no, I was not in Bangalore. I was uh, in Pune only. Yeah. Pune only. Okay. So tell uh, me, what's your question there? Uh, no, I just want to say you thank you. And uh, I don't know, Rangna, can you just please connect with me in silence? I just want to be with you. You're okay, sweetheart. You're okay, you're okay. You're gonna be okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Everything's going to be okay. I promise you. You're going to be okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I see you. Yeah. I want to repeat Everybody the course. Else. Yeah. Please come back. You can assist at no charge. Just come back and assist. We'd love to have you there, Dr. Prachi. So, uh, Preeti, so the thing with food allergies, we'd recommend inner child matrix work, which is the next level up from EFT, because with food allergies, you have to be careful not to, like peanut allergies can create anaphylaxis, for example. So you'd ha you have to learn first how to keep the child safe and put something in place on as a strategy. We've had people overcome mushroom allergies, fish allergies, egg allergies. Uh, we've had people come over bread allergies, gluten allergies. So I would again say, you know, pretty my preferences, if you don't want to learn it for yourself, I wouldn't recommend you use it in your daughter based on what you learn. Let us get you in touch with one of our practitioners who are qualified to do that as well, um, that can support you. Great. So let's see, Madhumita, I'm going to move you in next. Tell me. Yeah, tell me, Madhumita. Oh, you need to unmute. Is that, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are, Madhumita. Tell me. Okay, what, first what, of all, what, yes, thank you very much. God's abundant blessings on all of you for the wonderful sessions. And I thank Sumitra for introducing me to EFT. Now I have a Sumitra Raj. Yes, she's my classmate from college. We are both. Oh, Delhi. how amazing in Delhi! Oh, lovely. So, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Hello. Hello. So, uh, my daughter got anxiety attacks after she started working for the COVID patients networking. When she finished one job and she did not have a job, so she was networking twenty four seven, providing them with oxygen cylinders and. In different cities, basing, base, she was based in Bangalore, but she was trying to provide oxygen cylinders, medicines, doctors, and you know, hospital beds and all that. And at the end of the one and a half week, she couldn't do it much because a lot of people were dying and beds were not available. 
and then she got into an anxiety attack and so we had to i spoke to sumitra and she said i should be attending the eft that's one reason second is i also got high, i have high bp and she developed high bp but then i gave her bed rest and you know like just kind of diet and just relaxation in the same room and she recovered and she got a new job now how do i deal with her anxiety attacks because she said that she gets this panting she was getting very severe panting and her bp was very high she's 33 years old her bp was uh, 100, 145 by 95 for mm-hmm. a week but then you know i controlled the diet gave her salt free diet and all that stuff and then it came down to 120 by uh by 75 80 so I just today she said so she i don't want panting. you to answer the question because i want to maintain her privacy but one of the most important things is to ask the question on what was it that triggered her when she had to work with the covid patients because there's clearly an anxiety trigger there that happened oh, to her okay. and so you'd have to uncover well number so it, it seems like you have a great relationship with her which is lovely and then sometimes when helping someone they might need an independent person to work with them uh, even though it seems like you've created a very safe space so one is what and i suspect there were some beliefs that came into place about her ability or helplessness or what was going on or fear of getting it herself you know there's a lot of covid related anxiety people are experiencing because it's triggering it's making the fear of death it's making the fear of unknown the fear of instability so real and so true so you know either she could work with a practitioner a qualified practitioner one to one like sumitra or she could or if you were to learn EFT and you would say to her, look would you be willing to be my case study and then ask her to be your case study and then work with her and then you can let us know as we keep meeting over the months that we're together the progress that you're having with her and then you can ask us deeper questions where we would support you and say well try this out with her try this out with her try this out with her and there'll come a time when you'll let us know that she's feeling better i mean you're already supporting her in other ways which is great but what we want to do is we want to understand the trigger and clear the trigger from the root cause does that make sense yes does make sense i think the trigger was my husband got covid so then she oh, panicked yeah that course. she also had the fear what you were saying she kept asking me will i get covid will i get covid so why should you get covid will i get covid will i get covid so that fear was there you know many so times so when someone gets covid it can accelerate the fear of death not i'm going to die but the other person's going to die okay and delhi the situation was very intense by the way yeah so she was helping people all over the country and uh, networking you know and i don't know what she was doing but she asked my permission that can i work 24/7 because it's a crisis which everyone's facing and i want to work 24/7 being a doctor so strike. what what i would want you to do is something else if you decide to come on training i want you to do surrogate work because she seems too busy to receive any sessions so surrogate work which is where you connect with her energy bang on you right tap on yourself and you do it for her every day you know i had a mother who came on my training in london the sun was being kicked out of the swami narayan school the sun would be zero, like i don't eft i don't want anything so she did saragar eft on herself okay. and then she held the sun and he got a grades he went on to join london school of economics for politics uh, ppe okay. politics another yeah. p and english one of the hardest degrees to get into and he was being thrown out of school by the way okay. so you can do saragar work with her every day okay because i told her to come to your session today she said she's one sunday busy. i'm not coming i'm not coming today she's so too busy right, right now she's too busy don't don't do that to her right now this is not the right time for her she needs to carry on because it is her dharma right now what she's doing she needs to carry on and do it how you can help her is learning it for yourself and doing surrogate work for her ha huh? and uh, and the second thing sorry if i'm taking so I much mean, of your time the second thing is i work with a lot of underprivileged children and you know with, Uh, as a dentist i go to remote areas and give oh you uh, just uh, huh huh oh yeah prevention and uh, all kinds of stuff i try to do with children and with elderly whosoever i meet in my uh, journey whether if i travel or if i go to remote villages 
so i would like to practice the eft for those kind of people do you think it's going to be effective for underprivileged because i don't charge them i don't charge them and the easiest people to work with they are the, you know why i remember i was working with some underprivileged people in delhi because they don't have all these hang ups is it working is it not working they haven't yeah. had all that time to like develop this over thinking and yeah. analysis yeah. and excel spreadsheets and ppt you just do like this one woman she came she's a tension order mera marad peeta hai i don't even speak good hindi you know as a halaki tension ho raha hai mera husband peeta hai main apne aap ko purna rup se pyar and swikar karti hu peeta hai tension hota hai peeta hai tension hota hai peeta hai tension hota hai peeta मैडम जी टेंशन चला गया ऐसा तुमने नहीं लेट्स जस्ट प्ले लिटिल बिट मोर लाइक एज इन सो वी डिड अ लिटिल बिट मोर ऑफ कोर्स देयर वाज सोसाइटल थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन ना अबाउट द हस्बैंड हर सिक्योरिटी एंड ऑल दैट शी कम्स नेक्स्ट टाइम मैडम जी मैडम जी हस्बैंड मरद मरद नॉट हस्बैंड मरद दे डोंट से हस्बैंड मरद नहीं पिया रात को आई एम द प्रिविलेज इज द इजीएस्ट टू वर्क विद वी आल्सो पार्टनर विद द स्कूल इन लखनऊ Okay. And, uh, you know, people on the kids, so prostitution, kids on the street. You know, prostitution because initially they wouldn't want to. Um, they 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 were offered a warm bed, food. They wanted to go back to the streets. They did not want to come in the shelter because they were so used to that. And the only way he unlocked it was by working on the emotional part, the psychological part. to really help the ch- kids to be able to let go emotionally of the trauma they faced on the streets and then they never wanted to go back hmm. because there are two schools one is very near my house for the domestic workers children study so i go to that school and do everything possible for them and there's another school let also for the slum children come and there i have taught hindi i have motivated them i do all kinds of stuff whatever sister tells me these are all walking distances so i was thinking of eft for them Yeah, so uh, you can w- once you. I need to learn it first, right? Learn it first, yeah, correct. You need to learn it, and then you need to do it one to one. And then, if you want to do group work, you have to become a practitioner because the ethics is very important for me. The integrity, you know, and then do how do I do group work for children? And that's how you take it forward. Okay. 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 Nita V, nice let me you. have you in next. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Madhumita. Please give my regards to Sumitra. I'm really fond of her. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Nita V, hello, darling. Hey, Rangana. Nita here. Nita. Two things first. First of all, I want you to close your eyes. With whatever I have earned on the spiritual path, I bless you from the core of my heart. I love you. Is that your guru in the background? And secondly, Rangna, can I connect to your energy, please? It's been a longing for such a long time. It's the same energy in you, Nita. There's nothing more special in me. I don't know. I just want to just feel that experience.
right next to you, Nita. Thank you so much. I don't know. I feel that there's an air conditioner inside me. It's, it's an amazing feeling. Okay, so EFT has been coming to me like, you know, like a, like a ray. I'm not going seeking. Even today's session was offered by you as a divine gift. And here I am. I was in your uh, booster from other channels and uh, I have been doing it. Uh, I was introduced through somebody through a workshop, a couple of hours in a day. I was introduced to the tapping solution. So what I'm trying to say is EFT, EFT, EFT. And I find it so amazing. And your other gift of the three sessions through your uh, coach, I even uh, wrote back to you were monumental. And I want to take her name here, Babita. Babita it was up. like, today. oh my God, she is, I don't, I don't have an adjective. And I'm really at a loss of words, all right? Because words is my rosy roti and words is my passion because I teach uh, here at the university. But Babita is, is like, is awesome. She brought out something. I was, you know, it was like a termite eating me, uh, which I was not even aware. Probably I'd accepted it or not as surrender, not as. Well. I'm trying to find Babita. She should come forward, but I can't. Is she find. here? She should be. Yeah, she should be here. Yeah, yeah. Right. We well, I, I don't know if she's here, but uh, yeah, what she... I have to share, communicate to you from my heart to uh, yours. You know, she brought out something which is so monumental. I'm on the spiritual path for 21 years, which is kind of like a lifetime. And when this hit me, it was like, and I'm a hundred percent, thousand percent believer, which I was not earlier. And I'm an ancient India scholar. I don't say that any longer. Um, so I talked about grief because I lost my father uh, six months ago. And uh, so I thought it was grief. No, it was sadness, which was so deeply buried inside me. And and she's such a gentle person. So uh, all kudus, all my heartful thanks. And on Facebook, because I'm a very spontaneous and expressive person. So I have to share it with a huge, uh, lovely gathering. I just called it a continental satsang. I shared, Rangana, you are a 24-7 wellness Santa Claus. I really mean it, you know. So those who don't believe in Santa Claus, we have you. And today you're wearing, incidentally, a red. So uh, these were a few sharing and I'm very, very, very much drawn because for the past six years, I'm uh, an online global counselor. I'm volunteering because apart from my teaching, all that I do is uh, sharing is caring. So that is my giving back to society, to my family, to my friends, because touch word, uh, my family, my friends. So my life, I've been gifted with, you know, like your gift. So um, I'd like to, uh, so I'll call you up one of these days. I'll message you because we've spoken earlier. I'm going to uh, draw a line here. Thank you very much. All your assistance, your huge family. Gratitude from my heart. And I mean every word. Thank you. Ed. Love you. Love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nita. Narayan K next. I just mean great to see you again. Narayan. Hi, can I? Oh, okay. Hi, good evening, Rangana. Hello, you? good evening, Narayan. Yeah, uh, Rangana, I just uh, had a couple of questions. Uh, see, I, I, I have done the level one and two courses. Now, I would like, if I would want to uh, be as an assistant in the uh, upcoming classes, how do I do yeah. it? So, uh, Nimisha will send you an application uh, where you just fill it in mm -hmm. and you will be all in. There's nothing for you to pay because you've already done training with us. And then you just yeah. have to come and uh, we meet the day before, the day before for okay. two hours where you receive a briefing. 
and then the training begins at 2 30 pm ist so on day one we'll meet at 1 30 pm ist so now we'll give a briefing then as well the assist will give a briefing and then we finish training around 6 30 and sometimes we stay on so you have to do nothing other than fill an application in and make the time commitment for all 12 sessions because you see with assist now we are creating the embrace for everyone joining us so okay. we want the assist to stay for the whole time because then it creates that safe and sacred space. So, uh, Misha, can you just give me a yes or unmute and just tell me yes that you've heard what he said and you can send it. I mean, Naren comes on our EFT serve, so we know him. I'm just sending him. Uh, okay, you're just sending him now? So, so, and I have done level one and two only. So That's all you need to do, level one and two. Uh, that is what we are having in July, uh, like um, 23rd of July it begins. Okay. Just come and repeat that one. Oh, huh? you're, you're not going into level three and uh, level three. I'm doing three. now. It's before fifth of July. So if you want to do level three, you can also attend level three because you've done one and two. It's on the fifth of July. I'll get Nimisha to connect you with Darren to have a conversation. Level three and matrix also. Have matrix. You? It's in December with Sudha. I just completed it in. Um, I just did my last one for some time in uh, May. So the next okay. one is with Sudha in December. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Th thank right, you. Okay? Nara, I'd love to see you. So I'll be seeing you in July and then uh, Daryl will let you know about EFT3 also, okay? Sure, sure. And EFT3, may I do a masterclass also where I give video training on how to work with diabetes, depression, autoimmune, uh, corporate, uh, classroom with children. So you learn lots of different things as well. Thank you so much for your patience waiting for too long. Okay, um, Nimisha, can you post for Rekha the date she wants a date for training, huh, on here? Uh, let's see, Usha, come. You have to just uh, open your video for me to have you come forward quickly. I'll have Shraddha come forward while you get your camera open, huh? Shraddha, tell me. Yeah, I am, hi, thank you, Rangana. I just wanted to know, I'm a little confused with this practitioner training thing. When yes. we do the practitioner training thing, it includes level one, two, and the practitioner training, or it is divided into a number of... It includes level one, which is known as foundational training, which is for right. self-help. And it includes level two, which is the practitioner training. Pure content I'm teaching in a live classroom where you do breakout sessions, you practice, you learn the technique. And then it includes... 18 hours of mentoring. So that's, it'll be every Saturday. I can't remember if it's the morning or afternoon. Nimisha, will, okay. Nimisha post the supervision dates also, mentoring dates also. I can't remember right now whether it's morning and after, or afternoon, where that's like three hour sessions and they're very intimate with only your batch. Nobody else comes to that. And so we talk about cases, we talk about struggles that people are having. Uh, you get to practice your skill. You learn how to do a case study. You learn how to take an intake. You learn how to have a conversation with a client. So you learn all those client-related skills. Then you also get access to a portal with videos, 15 videos on EFT tapping that I have run in a live in class. So tell me more. What else do I need? So to it do? is the wholesome program where I become a professional practitioner and yeah. I practice. And you have to submit case study. So after you okay. finish the training, because I am accredited internationally, this is not some like uh, yes, some yes, 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 print it off the ah. certificate for me. It's not like that at all. You'll okay. get a certificate of attendance. Then you have to submit uh, six sessions on two people as a full case history. Then you have to submit 50 practice sessions, one hour okay. each. We will also help you to get in touch with clients. So that is not a problem. Like when we did Boosted, we took 162 clients, by the way. So okay. we will also help you to get clients. It's completely okay. The reason 50 is because you're being your, your skill is being monitored on working with lots of different people. Right. Okay. And then you have to send me one video of you doing a, a session. And you have to write your reflections because you will also get six one-to-one -one sessions with a professional therapist as well. Your own choice, completely confidential. You decide what you want to work on. And you get two benefits. One is you receive, so if your own kind of clearing. The second is you get to learn how a real practitioner is also working. So you get to learn, okay, if I'm a practitioner, I would want to do this part like them, but I don't want to do this part like them. 
because you want to develop your own identity as a own way of doing it yeah right okay another question ramna since i'm i'm interested i would just like yeah. to get tell the me, gist of it yeah. yeah another thing is like once i do the say practitioner training yeah. i learn how to heal myself as well as others professionally right so does that include that s part which was there uh, the tapathan self healing so what we do for our alumni is we will add that tapathan for you guys for only 5000 bucks So you just pay a nominal fee for it, and I will do it live in person in January, by the way, next year for twenty-one okay. days. And those yes. who sign up for the S without yes. the practitioner, they will get access to my twenty-one days. Because you January one to January twenty-first also. Okay. So and this a- practitioner training is starting on twenty-third July. Twenty-third July, yeah. Okay, so I have already booked a discovery call with uh, Nimisha. Okay. A discovery okay. call on that Facebook page, so I will discuss the details there then, right? You discuss the details with her. Nimisha, just check you have Shraddha in your diary, yeah? Because she gets so fully booked. You do, huh? Shraddha in your diary. I have. I have booked it for twenty ninth, three o'clock. Tuesday. Okay, great. Yeah, Lovely. Yeah. She's all smiling and she's like this. She yes. has you in. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, you Ram. Have, have a great good time with her, by the way. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Here's your Shraddha. Good. Let's have uh, uh, Usha. If you just put your yeah, come, come, Usha. Yeah, okay. Just <laughs> wait. <laughs> Patiently, <laughs> because yeah, I have to come Usha. out of the room every time you called out my name because I'm at work. I can't speak in Usha. front of colleagues. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, I was uh, very impressed. I'm. Uh, my cousin is doing EFT for a very long time, but somehow I didn't get acquainted with that. Okay, because I found it. I'm being very. I found it. Uh, Too long for me. I'm impatient by nature. But anyway, after being with you for this short time, I'm very much impressed, and uh, I'm very much overwhelmed by your. Uh, I don't know how to express. Anyways, uh, you must have understood. Uh, I have two questions. Basically, I'm suffering from bruxism. Jo, uh, I eat. I have eaten my teeth up, basically, over the years. i have put caps on my teeth you know basically i have these the uh, jaw guards in the night and second question is regarding my cousin uh, uh, she is uh, having um, last stage of a very uh, um, very rare kind of a cancer and uh, i have just i asked her just now very fast to connect to you right now she is in uh, uk so i hope she gets connected and uh, or otherwise i'll take this information for her and uh, another issue which i would rather speak in private so okay how can you help me i'm really sorry that you've had that for so long it must be really hard which are the best next step is um Nimisha can you get in touch with Usha offline and I wanted to fill in intake to begin with so I didn't get you I'm going to get you to fill in something known as an intake where you just share a little bit more so then that will allow us to have the private conversation so I can't promise Usha the private conversation is going to be for me with me or somebody else right now there is no charge for that private conversation it's the way we work is um I want you to fill an intake in Usha it where you just get some questions so then and the private part you can leave out and you can just speak to the person about it but I want Nimisha to connect with you and set up an appointment for a conversation yeah i would be happy if it would be with you um uh because it's something difficult i can't even speak about it okay i hear you i hear you be in touch with nimisha nimisha can you send her a message in her private right now do you have her number Usha? i'm in the group in the continued education group uh, i don't know whether you all are which there which number are you on which number group 21 a b c or d all down i'll check you Just uh, one, one, twenty-one. Is it an alphabet after? 
um, I don't know. Um, 972. My number starts with 972. I don't think you'll have many with that. Usha, number. just put your number in, in, in Zoom chat right now. Or just go, hi, it's me, Usha. Just go, hi, it's me, Usha, on the Zoom chat, okay. on the WhatsApp chat, okay? okay. No, but I can't. Only admins are allowed. No, no, you should be able to post on the WhatsApp group. No, I cannot. Uh, Nimisha, can you post your number on all the groups right now so Usha can find you and then send you a message back? Um, Janice wants the link for the discovery call. Nimisha, can you post it in the Zoom chat, please? Huh? Is this okay. okay? I don't know how to connect. Nimisha, will you send her a private message now on Zoom chat and just give her your number right now, okay? Just give her your number. Okay. Um, so will you talk about books as a student then? Namisha will get us, we'll figure out how to get us connected, Usha. Just okay. get your phone, you, we need your phone number. We can contact you. Okay. Madhumita, okay. yeah, tell me. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay. You're saying bye, Madhumita? Bye. You got to unmute then. Uh, I want your energy. Oh, I just cannot forget you. The way you smile and the way you laugh. Oh, the the laughter is just ringing in my ears. I wish I could do that even once. Oh, just awesome. I just want your energy. And then the rest can happen. The energy is in you. We have the same energy. Thank you, Mother Mita. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Mm. Mm. Lovely. Megha and Preeti, can you open your videos? Darling, just give them the link on there on Zoom chat, please. Huh? Um, group healings. You want group healings, Janice? Prama, I'll miss you. Goodbye. Take care. Preeti, how do I begin my day? I begin my day with um, four in the morning. I wake up. I have a hot glass of water. Then I do a coconut oil pulling. Then after that, I do a self-healing. I do a meditation. And then I get on my computer and I do some work because it's a quiet time and nobody disturbs me. And so then I work for about an hour. Then as soon as the sun starts to rise and it's around 5.35 or 5.45, 5.55, I go out for my walk. I do about 2.5 to three kilometers in the morning. If I'm very energetic, I do um, five kilometers. And then I go up to the terrace. I have my yoga mat. And I do my stretches, nothing too much, just my stretches. And then I do whatever I taught you and boosted, which was, ah, and then the immune boosting, you know, the finger holes, whatever I taught you and boosted, I do that. And then I come down to my room and I have my breakfast. I like to have a good breakfast. So I'll do something like quinoa upma, or I'll do last night's sabji and roti. So I make sure I have a good breakfast. I love my breakfast. And I begin my day with uh, like, this is pomegranate juice I had today. I have a, a white pumpkin juice in the morning. Then I have a tulsi juice after that. And then I've started a pomegranate juice halfway through the day. And I have, we have a mango tree and the mangoes are in season now. So for my lunch, I have a, a bowl of mango and one pomegranate juice. And then I sip hot water throughout the day. I have a hot water flask with me. It sits next to my desk. And so I probably have eight, nine glasses of this every single day. Hmm? And then I drink four liters of water. Okay. And answer your call. <laughs> Did I answer your question? 
<laughs> then I sleep <laughs> and I like my sleep. I sleep by 9 p.m. Don't try and call me after 6 or 7 p.m. because I'm not very functional. Mega Preeti, you had a question. Anybody else had a question? Any other questions? Uh, hi, Tanda. From where are you? Hi, hi, hi Ranga. Hi, Preeti. Hi, hi. I hope you can see me. I'll just switch on the light. Yeah, I can see you. Hi. So this is my third session with you, and it has been lovely. Um, and I've also, uh, you know, undertaken some, uh, I wouldn't say EFT, but NLP healings for myself. Lovely. Um, they work beautifully for me. Uh, I took four of them last year and eight of them this year. So uh, my problem uh, was uh, one, I have melasma and for the past two, three years, it has been there for the past 15 years. And uh, you know, for the melasma, past- What happens with melasma? So these are brown patches, which, which, are, which are there on the skin. Is it not, it's, it's not pigmentation, is it more than that? It's more than that. It's more than that. It's hyperpigmentation. Sleep related? Um, well, um, now I can't say that whether it's sleep Because related I used to or... have it here. Okay. I used to have it here. There's a little bit of a shadow still left. I used to have it here. Okay. So uh, I have uh, this melasma for the past 15, 16 years. And before my son was born, they would come. it would come and go. Now it has somehow become a permanent affair. You know, it, it, is, it is just sitting on my face. So uh, that, that is one. And the second is, you know, uh, I recently took uh, NLP sessions, eight of them, and I suffer from very chronic uh, stomach issues. I had acidity, which has gone, thank God, because of NLP. And, uh, but I still have chronic gas in my stomach. And, um, uh, you know, there is, the gas is so much that, you know, I could find one reason for it, but, uh, you know, the other reasons are still there. The gas has become so much that it is my stomach pains like throughout the day. Uh, you know, today I had to take, um, you know, antacid just to suppress the pain because it is so much I feel I, I'm going to die. So I just wanted to connect with you on that. So what do you want? Uh, uh, I want to resolve my stomach issue. Well, uh, I think I can, uh, you know, what I'm thinking is I'm planning to do a practitioner course, uh, but I just wanted to speak to you regarding this, that, you know, I have this chronic uh, stomach I issue. Melesma. You, how do you feel? Do you feel you have been able to digest life? No, I think that is, uh, that there is, a big is about an inability to digest life. So you want to write this question down okay. for yourself, Preeti. You want to write, you okay. want to write down how are all the ways I have not been able to digest life. Okay. And you want to write down every event in your life when you couldn't digest life. And then say, if you decide okay. to come on the EFT training, you can do personal piece what Manisha was saying and work one at a time. Or you can, if you can take it to your NLP therapist also and say that yes. these are the memories that I would like to work on. And then if you decide okay. to do EFT practitioner training, you can also take it to your therapist on EFT practitioner training and say, these are the ways I've not been able to digest life. And so then they'll help you unlock it for yourself because sometimes when you're learning, it's nice to have like, and I'm so proud of you. Like, I really want to honor you. You know, it takes, it takes a really incredible person to say, I'm okay to reach out and get the help I need. But you know what, Preeti, you're a healer and you're a light worker too. I don't know if you've learned anything ever, but you have that ability in you. There is something in your energy that you, there is a gift within you that you could share with other people. How does that feel? Oh, <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, I've been told that and 
Yeah, it's a very special energy, Preeti. You just don't trust yourself sometimes, that's all. You don't believe in okay. you. I believe more in you than you believe in you. Thank you, thank you so much. Whatever dream you have for yourself, you can do it, Preeti. You can do it. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, but thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pleasure. I wish you all the best for your digestion and your health. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it means a lot for me. <laughs> and, you know, I think uh, probably you've just confirmed my thoughts, uh, you know, about uh, becoming a healer. The healer is already within you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Megha, you're going to put your video on and then when, after Megha, I'll do a round of tapping for all of us together. And then I'll close, I'll thank everyone. So I'm not sure if Megha is going to put on her, or maybe she's not. So let's just do a round of tapping with everyone, okay? <coughs> Even though, even though, yeah, let's get Swati with me. Even though, even though, I have my own challenges in life. I have my own challenges in life. That's okay. That's okay. I'm open to the possibility. I'm open to the possibility. Of loving myself anyway. Of loving myself anyway. Even though, even though. I have my own anxieties in life. I have my own anxieties in life. My own emotional troubles. My own emotional troubles. I'm open to the possibility. I'm open to the possibilities. Of loving all of me anyway. Of loving all of me anyway. Of allowing the healer within me to unleash of allowing the healer within me to unleash. Allowing my body to heal itself. Allowing my body to heal itself. Allowing my mind to rest. Allowing my mind to rest. Allowing all of me to rest. Allowing all of me to rest. Suppose somehow. Suppose somehow. I could realize. I could realize. I am going to be okay. That I'm going to be okay. That life is going to be okay. That life is going to be okay. All is well. All is well. I am safe. I am safe. And take a breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Thank you so much, Dr. Swati. Thank you so much. So, guys, we are coming to the end of our time together. It's been absolutely incredible getting to know you. And I want to take this time to acknowledge these incredible souls that were assisting us through our. Hey, Lou. Hi. Hey, Hi. Um, can I ask just one simple question? Yes, yes, you can. Um, my question was when I was connecting to you for the other question, uh, it popped up in my mind as a secondary question. It was uh, that, like you described, that if we get triggered by something or when we are doing sessions for anyone, what is recommended after that? Is it recommended that then we do conduct that, uh, you know, that whatever has been disturbed on ourselves for ourselves? Yes, you, you would want to do a session with yourself or you would want to do a session with a professional to help you or uh, our students, they swap with each other when they learn it. So yeah, we would recommend that. The other thing, Shruti, I used to do in my early days, I used to take salt bath mm, as well. So whenever I finish the session, so the thing is on the session day, meditate in the morning for an hour for sure. 
then I get nice, you see, I got my flowers here, I get flowers, I spray the room with aroma, light, incense, like I have a full ritual. Then I myself want to clean the room, like face-to-face -face sessions, may, na, I would clean the couch, clean, hoover myself only, you know, open the windows, let the fresh energy in, and then I'd be ready and for the client. And then when the client session would finish and some of my sessions I do are three hours long because they're very deep. And you know, you realize that there's this energy which is just, you know, logged out in the room. Some, sometimes yeah, it happens. Yeah. Like Absolutely correct. And then I take a salt bath. So I usually cook them something in the morning also if I do face to face. So I'll make like a moong dal soup or uh, some watermelon pieces, you know, because I like to just ground them a little bit before they leave. And then when they have their meal and then when they've gone, I go take a salt bath, a tub bath. So I put salt. I don't have it here in India, but in my home in London, I do. I put salt in the bath. I put lavender. I put eucalyptus to remove the, any negativity. And then I put rose petals and I put candles. I put lovely music and then I have a salt bath. <laughs> no, it trust me, such a relief, you know, knowing that because I was thinking ki maybe I'm doing something wrong. Ki I'm feeling all this. So what I realized was that I have a personal procedure with myself also and maybe I didn't take care of myself while doing all that. That's beautiful, Shruti, if you do that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Shilpa, I, I tap on the top of the head. Thank you, Shruti, only for positive stuff. That's what I tap on the top of the head for positive stuff. Hi, Rangana. I want to share something. Yes. Tanvi. Hi, yes. Tanvi. Hi, Rangana. So, yeah, I wanted to share something. Since she uh, already shared, you know, it's been recommended that empaths should spend more time with water <laughs> because water really heals them and their emotions and everything. So I do experience that a lot. So my bathing is mostly for my, you know, healing. I sing along and I take half an hour to shower. So uh, I think that's the best way to deal with it. And also, I would say one more thing that, you know, um, I was associated with Azealia. You must be, uh, you know, uh, yeah. And Love she was my life coach. And uh, I got to know uh, about you from her. And uh, something very bad happened. I was going through grief. And, you know, maybe spiritual awakening was there to, you know, yet to happen. So uh, that time she gave me your number that, you know, walk with Rangana, do EFTs. And at that time, I didn't have money, you know, since September, I was not getting paid. And it was, um, you know, I was going through anxiety and I used to have panic attacks earlier. And eventually I realized that it was a pattern that I need to, needed to break, you know, and associated with my inner child and a lot of things. And today I had a session with Swamini and uh, it was lovely, Rangana. I self-reflected a lot. And, you know, I found out that, you know, I was actually projecting uh, the fear of my mother, wow. you know, and um, it was uh, crazy because, you know, I was reliving the past memory, you know, something that was happening uh, to my mother when I was, you know, at that time. And still when that person was involved doing something with her, I was overthinking, I was connecting the dots and I was just reliving the memory. So somewhere in my heart, now I self-reflected on myself that I need to forgive. I need to forgive more. I did not. There are still little bit of remnants of that past memory and that pain and hurt that is left inside me. And I need to get rid of that from all of my cells of my body. And so be it. Yes. So be it. That's what I learned after whatever happened today. And I'm so grateful that, you know, uh, universe is giving me all the opportunities to, you know, release it, you know, release it all and, you know, just uh, become uh, wiser and wiser. And maybe I have a journey of, you know, healing self and then healing others. And mostly I am doing it for the earth. So I want to heal the mother earth. I am an environmentalist. So, and um, yeah. And I'm really, really thankful to you and Swamini and Azilia. She's my angel. You know, she has been the most import, important force in my life. You know, you know yeah, while she talking, comes with, she comes I'm with invisible shaking, wings too. You know? I'm shaking. My hands are shaking because I used to get panic attacks. I'm overwhelmed so much. But, uh, you know, thank you so much. Thank you. 
your blessings from me all of you thank you for sharing beautiful tanvi thank you so much i'm so grateful it worked out for you yeah Okay, so I realize there might be some questions I haven't answered. I'll work with the team to answer them after we finish today. And then we'll get them, we'll get all that information. You can always ask. So Namisha will keep the group open until tomorrow. And then tomorrow morning around 10 o'clock, she'll post a message for all of y'all. And she'll give you some time if you have questions or things like that. And then she'll close the group, she'll make it silent. And then the next day she'll post a message again. So what I have to do right now is something really special.